All right, guys, let's check out a game called Slay the Princess. This one's got overwhelming positive reviews on Steam. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. Sounds bad. <laughs> a lot of options, jeez. Uh, the end of the world, what are you talking about? I'm talking about the end of everything as we know it. No more birds, no more trees, and perhaps most problematically of all, no more people. You have to put an end to her. But how can a princess lock away in a basement in the world? Don't linger on the specifics. You have a job to do here. Just get in there and do what needs to be done. We're all counting on you. Do you have any evidence to back this up? Look, you're already on the path that leads to the... Leads to the cab. Why would you be here running for an including important task? Have you said that maybe the only reason she's going to end the world is because she's locked up? While I appreciate the mental exercise, we are running up against a bit of a ticking clock. Nevertheless, let me assure you, the princess is locked up because she's dangerous. She is not dangerous because she's locked up. And before you decide to waste even more of our time by asking how I know that, let me suggest a more pragmatic lens through which to view this situation. Causality doesn't matter here, because the end result is the same no matter what led us up to this point. If the princess leaves the cabin, the world will end, and there is no changing that. It's no use arguing semantics over a metaphorical chicken or egg, because the egg is hatched and it's about to ruin everything. Unless, of course, you do your job and slay her. Killing a princess seems kind of bad though, doesn't it? Does it? Are you a monarchist? <laughs> is slaying a princess that much worse than slaying a fisherman or a miller or a seamstress? If anything, slaying a princess is much better than slaying a seamstress. Seamstresses contribute something of value to society. True. Can't someone else do this? Oh, if only that were the case. But I don't make the rules. I have to say, I'm surprised at your reluctance thus far. But unfortunately for the both of us, you're the only one who can pull this off. Like I said, I don't make the rules no matter how much I wish I did. Have you ever considered that maybe I'm okay with the world ending? Of course I haven't. Why would I even consider that? Nobody wants the world to end. I mean, maybe some people do, like nihilists or very, very evil people, but surely you're not one of those, right? we get some sort of reward for doing this? Yes, but you'll have to slay her before you get it. Is that what my prize is going to be for doing a good job? It's a secret, but I think you'll like it. It's a special reward, just for you. But whatever you think it might be, I can promise you it's going to be even better than your wildest imagination. Look, I'll go to the cabin and I'll talk to her, and if she's as bad as you say, then she may be I'll slay her, but I'm not communicating with any to communicate anything until I've had a chance to meet her face to face. Then I guess we'll just have to see what happens. But a word of warning. If you go in prepared to hear her out, she could easily trap you in her web of lies. And the more you listen to her honeyed words, the harder it'll be to pull yourself out. Then each and every one of us is doomed. So sure, go talk to her. See how that turns out for all of us. You make your way up the short path to the cabin. 
you'll find the princess within. We're not going to go through with this, right? She's a princess. We're supposed to save princesses, not slay them. Ignore him. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Proceed to the cabin. I like the art style for this. Well, let's go chat with the princess, shall we? The interior we? of the cabin is almost entirely bare. The air is stale and musty, and the floor and walls are painted in a fine layer of dust. The only furniture of note is a plain wooden table. Perched on that table is a pristine blade. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. I will take the blade. Actually, let me not take the blade. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a staircase faintly illuminated by an unseen light in the room below. This is an oppressive place. The air feels heavy and damp, a hint of rot filtering from the ancient wood. If the princess really lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. Her voice softly carries up the stairs. Hello? Is someone there? It's hypnotizing. It's the kind of voice you only have to hear once to remember it for the rest of your life. Don't let it fool you. It's all part of the manipulation. You're playing a dangerous game by coming here unarmed. Hi. Don't be a stranger. It's been so long since I've had any visitors. Please, come downstairs. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. She's beautiful. Hmm. How could someone like this be a threat to anyone? Yeah. I am begging you to stay focused. There's a lot riding on you here. Hi. Do you think you can get me out of these chains? Yeah. Well, let's talk a bit first. Okay. Oh. She pauses, carefully formulating her words before she responds. You can address me as your royal highness. Or you can just call me Princess, if your Royal Highness is too formal. Is Princess her name or her title? That's us. What if it's both? Could you imagine being named Princess Princess? So, Princess is your name? Like I said, you can call me Princess, if you'd like. That's sus. Why won't you give me your I'm name? sorry, I've been down here so long, I guess I've just forgotten. I must have a name, though. Everyone has a name. Okay, that's weird. She hadn't even thought to pick a name for herself. Hopefully, you're starting to see that she can't be trusted. Go back upstairs, get the blade, and slay her before it's too late. I don't know anything about you. First, all I know is you're locked up down here for a reason. Of course I'm locked up down here for a reason. I don't actually know what that reason is, but you don't just stuff a princess in a basement and throw away the key without there being some sort of an explanation, right? You have all the explanation you need, and you should know better than to trust whatever she comes up with. If I'm the first person you've seen in a while, what have you been eating or drinking? I don't see what that has to do with anything. Yeah. This is the only time this is ever going to happen, but I agree with the princess. That's hardly relevant. Okay, but actually, what has she been eating? She has to eat, right? I 
I've been sitting here to slay you, but I... But I want to see for myself. I'm not sure what to believe. It, is that why they threw me down here? But I don't want to hurt anyone. I, I like the world, I think. I don't remember much about it, to be honest. I've been down here for so long. That's... How long has she been locked away? Did they tell you how I'm supposed to end the world? What are you gonna do if I let you out of here? The princess hesitates before responding. She doesn't know. She's been down here too long to have any idea of what she'd do in another life. She knows what she'd do. She's just searching for whatever answer she thinks you want to hear. What I do doesn't really matter, right? At the end of the day, whatever the two of us have going on down here is about trust. Whoever sent you to slay me claimed I was a threat to the world, but they didn't tell you why. I don't trust that. And I don't think you do either, or you wouldn't have come down here to talk. She has a point. We're talking like this for a reason. So this shouldn't be about what I'd do if I got out of here, or me saying the right thing to convince you to save me. This is about how messed up this whole situation is. This is my life we're talking about. Do you really think I can even end the world? Why would I even want to? We both know that if there's people we can't trust in this situation, it's whoever locked me down here, and it's whoever sent you here, and those two groups are probably one and the same. Don't let her turn the tables here. This isn't about trust. This is about risk. We stand to lose everything, all for the sake of one person and a subjugating monarch, no less. Mm. Subscribers, every time you don't believe her, type dance sus. Cause, I don't know. I'm gonna keep you locked away down here for at least we for a little bit and we get to know each other better before I decide what to do. That seems like a pretty good compromise. I don't think I could bear being down here that much longer. Leaving her alive is too risky. If you don't deal with her soon, she will find a way out. So I'm the only one who liked that idea. <sighs> one way or another? I'm going to find a way out of here. It would make it easier for both of us if you'd help. What? But if you don't, I can promise that you'll regret that decision. You have to make a choice. Let's hope for all our sakes, it's the right one. Uh-oh. All right, let's get you out of here. I'm going to examine the chains. You can't be serious. Thank you. I'm going to let Thank her out. You. you won't regret this, I promise. You're making a huge mistake. No, I think you're doing the right thing. You walk up to the chains binding the princess to the wall and give them a tug. They're large and heavy. Far too solid for you to even imagine trying to break them apart. I'm guessing you don't have the key? No. Maybe it's somewhere upstairs. Doubtful. Whoever locked the princess away down here intended for her to never see the light of day. They wouldn't have just left the key to her chains somewhere in the cabin. I'm gonna check upstairs. Maybe the key's still lying around somewhere up there. If not, maybe I can at least find something to break you free. Okay. I'll be here. Good luck. 
You attempt to make your way out of the basement, but the door at the top of the stairs slams shut. Uh oh. You hear the click of a lock sliding into place. Is someone else here? Hey, let me out of here! Your shouts and pleas are met with silence. I'll repeat myself once again. You're here to slay the princess, and you won't leave until the task is done. Try the door. You try the door, but it's locked from the outside. Oh, no. He locked me in. You make your way to the bottom of the stairs. This would have been so much easier if you'd just taken the blade like you were supposed to. Easier for whom? Easier for everyone. Look at the mess you're in. I heard the door slam. They locked you down here too, didn't they? Yeah. There's a slight panic rising in the princess's voice. If I could just get out of these chains, I know we could force our way out of here together. She barely hesitates oh, before raising her arm to her mouth, her teeth tearing through what her limb with the determination of a trapped wolf. As she rips her flesh from her bone, a sound comes from behind you, the clang of bouncing metal. It's the blade from upstairs. You're not sure how it made its way down here, but if there's a time to strike, it's now. Or we could use it to free her. You won't like what happens if you do that. Slay the princess. Without hesitation, bring the blade down and plunge it into the princess's back. Fine. The wound drives her to the ground. Good. Okay. There's no going back now. I'm with you to the end. You, you bastard. Were you lying to me this whole time? The princess pushes away from you, the motion ripping the blade from her back. Wounded, but still alive, she crouches on all fours in the corner of the room and meets your eyes with the ferocity of a cornered predator. Uh oh You've made a terrible enemy, and there's nothing in the world that can possibly save you from me. I thought we had the upper hand, but it's as if she's barely even threatened by us. It's an act. She's wounded and unarmed. There's nothing she can do to hurt you. I'm not so sure. Yeah, I don't believe that one. Don't waver now. As you ready your blade to deliver a lethal blow, she lunges at your legs with the same animal ferocity she used to tear at her arm. Your knife cuts into her again and again as you're tackled to the ground, your body racked with pain as she rips into you with tooth and claw. Forget about trying to rescue her. This is about survival now. Give her everything you've got. Slay the princess. Though your nerves are seizing with pain, you know you've done your fair share of damage as well, your blade having left deep gashes in the princess's back. You seize a moment of hesitation to throw her off of you and shakily push yourself back to your knees. We can still turn this around. Kill her! You steal your resolve and take another step closer to the princess. You probably won't make it out of here alive, but you can still make sure that she won't make it out of here either. Excuse me? What's this about not making it out of here alive? Do you think this is what I wanted to happen? I have a duty to state the facts of the situation, and honestly, it's a miracle anyone in this room is still standing right now. Don't act so surprised. Can you not feel all those gashes and holes pulling you apart? If the princess doesn't do you in here, blood loss is certain to finish the job. You take another step forward, and the princess lunges towards you. The two of you enter one last exchange, a flurry of blade and claw and fleshy ribbons. And then you stop, neither you nor princess able to go any further. 
you collapse on the ground, and the princess collapses beside you. Blood pools around you both, and you watch each other fade away. After all this time alone, I thought I'd finally found a friend, but you were just another monster, weren't you? Silence as the room starts to get fuzzy around you. You've paid a terrible price, but you've saved us all. It's over. If you think this is it, you're sorely mistaken. One way or another, I'll make sure you pay for this. But you don't have time to worry over such things. Everything goes dark, and you die. <laughs> the end. <laughs> Chapter 2, The Witch. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. I'm getting a terrible sense of deja vu. A terrible sense of deja vu? No, you don't have that. This is the first time either of us have been here. What? If he doesn't remember what happened, then maybe it's best to keep it that way. That's suspicious, Brilliant. sir. We need to keep our cards close to our chest, and I'm not sure we can trust him. You know I can hear you, right? It's going to be a lot harder than you think to keep secrets from me. Did I say I'm not sure we can trust him? <laughs> Slip of the tongue, bit of the old brain fog. I meant to say that we should probably head over to the cabin and slay that princess. We already know we can't trust her, so let's get on with the show. It's more than deja vu, though. I'm pretty sure this whole thing just, just happened. We could go back and forth on this forever, and it won't get you any closer to doing your job and saving the world. So let's just agree to disagree. Let's assume I'm telling the truth. All this really did already happen. Why should I listen to you? Why should I bother doing anything? Those are two very different questions, but fine. I'll indulge you if that's what it takes to get you moving. Let's say for a moment that this really is the second time you've met me, or at least a version of me. If you're back here, I'm assuming you died, which probably only happened because you didn't listen to me. We were just weighing our options in a morally ambiguous situation. You can't blame us for weighing our options. We did our best with the information we were given, and we did kill her. And yet you still died, didn't you? So congratulations, you've been given another chance to actually do this right. And I believe your other question was something along the lines of, Oh, what's the point of doing anything? If you're asking that, it sounds to me like you're making the rather dangerous assumption that your actions last time around didn't have any consequences. What do you mean? Of course there weren't any consequences. We killed the princess, the princess killed us, and now everyone's right back where they started. That sounds pretty consequence-free to me. Is this like a time loop? Yes, but in this purely hypothetical scenario, that begs the question of how you got back here. Did time simply rewind itself, or were you instead transported to a different world entirely? Had you failed to slay the princess, what would have happened to everyone in the place you left? That's a very good point. This princess character seems like a lot of trouble. And if you think about it, actually slaying her probably breaks us out of this cycle, right? We don't want to be stuck here forever, do we? You're laying it on a little thick, aren't you? Laying it on a little thick? What are you talking about? I'm sharing my honest opinions. Matters is that almost everyone seems to be on the same page. So whenever you're ready, go stop dawdling, get to the cabin, and save the world. I like this game. This is very interesting.
just be quick about it. She killed me last time. Like I said, if she killed you, it was probably because you didn't listen to me. Don't talk to her, don't trust her, just go in, do your job, and save the world. She killed me by ripping me to pieces, don't get me wrong, I hated it, but how could someone like that in the world? She just can. Believe me, I wish I could tell you more, but you'll just have to trust that what I'm saying is true, and that, despite it all, you're fully up to the task that's been given to you. I never trust anyone that tells me, don't think for yourself, just believe what I say. That's always... Who locked her in the basement? What is this place? People locked her in that basement, and I told you what this place is. It's a path in the woods. Don't overcomplicate things. People locked her away, why couldn't they slay her? Why is this falling on me? Look, I'm not supposed to say this, but it's because you're special. You're the only person capable of doing this. Call it a prophecy, if that helps, but it's just the way things are. Oh, I didn't know we were special. Of course you're special. Why else would you be here? Good point. That really explains almost everything. I'm not so sure about that. You know, you're right, but it explains almost everything. You're being cagey. What aren't you telling me? I've told you everything you need to know. Going into more detail will just overcomplicate an otherwise very simple situation and make your job more difficult. If you want us to stand a chance against her, we need to be armed with information. What is she really capable of? How are we supposed to stop her? Not to sound like a broken record, but the less you know about her, the better things will go for all of us. I know it sounds like I'm hiding something, but you're just going to have to take me at my word. I don't think either of you really need to press the man on this. He wants us to slay the princess, so why would he have anything to hide? He seems like a nice guy to me. I appreciate the vote of confidence, but you should really stop wasting time chatting amongst yourselves in the woods. So if we could move this along? Had this on my wish list, is it any good? Yes, so far this is really good. So the way it plays is you're charged with killing a princess and you go in there and then you kill her or don't kill her and then the game resets but then you remember everything that happened and you have to go in and do it again this is our second time going in so some weird time loop thing is happening it's very interesting that's all. Great. Now, if you don't mind, the whole world is waiting with bated breath for you to save it from ruin. So we went inside there, killed her with a knife, and then we died at the same time. Let's go to the cabin. A warning before you go any further. What? She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. Don't worry, I think we've taken that lesson to heart at this point. You can trust us to get the job done. Uh, hold on one second, chat. I need to make a quick call. The cabin is a mess of twisted roots. The walls a chaotic weave of knotted wood that, almost as if by accident, just happens to resemble a room. The floor is damp and earthy, and the only furniture of note is a slab of mud in the shape of a shelf, with a pristine blade perched on its edge. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. Wait. This is all different now. 
You didn't say anything about the mirror on the wall. That's because there isn't a mirror. There's the muddy shelf, the blade sitting on the muddy shelf, and the door to the basement. There's nothing else in here. Wait a minute. What do you mean? There's definitely a mirror. But he says there isn't one. I can clearly see it. Right? I can clearly see it, though. I trust my eyes. Why would he lie about there not being a mirror? What's the point? Come on now. He's pretty much in charge here. When have authority figures ever lied about it? <laughs> if there were a mirror in this cabin and we were supposed to look at it, he would have told us about it. Right. Exactly. Why would I lie about something so meaningless? What good would a mirror even do? Let you waste time preening yourself instead of doing what needs to be done. Ah. This whole cabin is different than last time. Very different. Maybe that's because you haven't actually been here. I hope this means you'll finally drop that ridiculous past life nonsense. You haven't died, and you certainly haven't been killed by the princess. So focus up. A lot's riding on this. I downloaded Diablo 4 again. It's pretty fun. Just played it for a bit yesterday. Yeah, Kevin's playing a lot too lately as well. He's been really enjoying the changes. Chat, do you want to look in the mirror or grab the knife? Which one do you want? Mirror? Looks like Chat overwhelmingly wants the mirror. Let's approach the mirror. You walk up to the wall next to the basement door. It's a wall. There isn't much to see here. This really isn't funny. Wipe the mirror clean. You reach forward and rub your hand against the cabin wall. Why is my hand so clawed? I hope claw? you know how ridiculous you look right now. Well, at least we can all agree now that there's nothing to see here. Case closed. Good work, everyone. What happened to the mirror? I'll take the knife now. You take the blade from the shelf. It would be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. Something well, if weird. we're grabbing a weapon, we should probably keep it hidden behind our backs. She doesn't have to know we have it. True. That's not actually a bad idea. Yeah, let's put it into the basement. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a staircase dug into the muddy earth below. The ceiling is thick with roots that hang like locks of tangled hair. The weak starlight from the cabin windows behind you can barely penetrate the gloom here, only illuminating the edges of an opening below. It shines in the darkness like some kind of massive moor waiting to swallow you up into the earth. The air smells of dirt and copper. It's thick and wet, as if your lungs are being coated in mud with each intake of breath. If the princess lives here, slaying her would probably be doing her a favor. Her voice skitters up from below. Something nasty finds itself on my stairs. Come on down. Don't be scared. I probably won't bite. Uh-oh. I will say nothing. Silence, I see. Don't think I've forgotten about you. I recognize the sound of your nervous little footsteps as soon as they came into my home. I know who you are. And I remember what you've done. Uh-oh. She knows. See? She knows us. Is this enough for you to believe what we've been saying? Maybe. But you shouldn't let that cloud your judgment. She's just a princess. As long as you remember that and remain focused, slaying her will be easy. Hmm. This game is so, in seems so engaging enough. though and clever. Maybe we can talk our way out of this whole situation. <sighs> you can't. Unless you slay her right away, she's going to break free and end the world. There's no reasoning with what she is. Look, I'm just throwing ideas out there. I like to think out loud. I'm the kind of guy who likes a discussion. Don't we want to hear what everyone has to say before making any big decisions? Do you want to hear what everyone has to say? Or do you just want to hear yourself talk? I'm gonna go in and stop stab her. Lingering. Your task is to slay the princess, not endlessly debate about what to do with the princess. Fine. 
Fine. You're the boss. I am going to go in and stab her. Thank you. You descend the basement steps, entering the dark room below. You can just make out the shape of the princess in the gloom. She's huddled against the far wall, her eyes bright and glaring from amid the thick roots. And there you are, one hand tucked away behind your back, gripping that sharp, sharp blade, no doubt. No. That's not fair. How would she know that? So, we've dropped the pretenses. Good. She's acting like she already knows you. I guess what you said back in the woods really was true. That's pretty sharp. How'd you figure that one out? <laughs> Call it deductive reasoning. Well, you seem to be great at it. So, you really don't remember us, do you? No, I don't. But you and the princess clearly have a shared reality, even if I'm not a part of it. I won't waste time fighting you on something that's clearly true. Oh, Nicole Goodnight in chat is the voice actress of the princess, everybody. So everyone say, uh, everyone say uh, thank you to Nicole Goodnight for doing a lovely performance. Well, hello, Nicole. You did a great job as a princess. I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to stab you. It's nothing personal. It's nothing personal. Like, you're probably a very nice person, but you got to die in the game. I'm sorry. You fought us on it back in the woods. That was when the only perspectives we had were yours and mine. I'm just glad we could put all this behind us. Is it all behind us? Just focus on the task at hand. I don't care if you've been here before, and I don't care if you think you'll go somewhere else after this. My world is on the line right now, so I'd appreciate it if you would take this seriously and slay her. Let's chat her up a bit first. Maybe we can find a middle ground where everyone's happy. Don't talk to her. You're just going to make things more difficult than they have to be. Well, I seem to remember you having a tongue. Hmm, let's see. Oh, there's a lot of options. Damn. Holy hell, there's a lot. I'm just gonna stab you, though. Without uttering a word, you charge the princess. <laughs> so much for finding an easy way out. I can't believe you're making us work for it. Better a violent fool than a plotting coward. Better for me, at least. Stab! As you close the distance, readying your strike, the princess's chain falls from her wrist. Uh-oh. She was lying. She takes advantage of your split second of surprise and throws a fistful of dirt into your eyes. Pocket sand! Oh, she no. gone out of those the whole time. That sneaky little... A woman after my own heart, really. It's a shame we're playing opposite teams. This is why you couldn't just abandon her here. Left to her own devices, she would always find a way out. Now stop her. You must have known I would be ready for you. Deep in your heart, you know the same things about me I know about you. We're both so very awful. As you brush the silt from your eyes, the princess tackles you, flattening you against the dirt floor. I should have seen the pocket sand coming. We were always going to kill each other here, weren't we? I can't trust you, and you can't trust me, and those doubts spin and spin and spin into hate. She buries her teeth oh. deep into your chest, Ow. tearing it. Great, she's distracted. Stab her in the back. In for a penny, right? Why not? As the princess gotcha. rips meat from bone, you plunge your weapon into her unprotected <laughs> back. Take that, princess. <laughs> you bastard. Even face to face, you find a way to stab me in the back. I know you, and you're hideous. Absolutely wretched. Just like me. Maybe we are the same. So what? Throw her off us. Kick her in the shins. We don't have to fight so dirty. Yes, of course we, do. we do. 
fighting clean won't help us win. It takes a wretch to know a wretch, and we're all at the bottom of the barrel here. There's no point in pretending otherwise. Are we at the bottom of the barrel? Yes, we are. Yes. We've got dirt in our eyes and a chunk of us chewed out. If that's not the bottom of the barrel, what is? No arguments here. You're doing great. Keep playing dirty if that's what it takes. But if we win, we won't be at the bottom anymore. We'll have climbed a little higher. And once we start climbing, well, who knows where we'll stop? You'll stop right here if you keep daydreaming. Don't let yourself get distracted thinking about what comes after. None of us ever said we stopped fighting. What a low oh. and vicious fight it is. Eyes gouged, skin scratched bloody, hair ripped and nails broken. Every rule there ever was in the book of honorable combat. Both you and the princess have broken a dozen times over. Looks like I have feathers. That's nice and all, but are we winning? Nobody's are you winning, winning, son? I thought playing dirty was supposed to give you the upper hand, but I suppose that doesn't work if you both sink to the same lows. Still, at least you're not losing. The princess cackles maniacally as the cracker continues. But behind her cackle, you hear the low groan of warping wood. Wood? Wait, what's going on? We're establishing a newer, better packing order. No, the groaning thing. Why is the wood making noise? Who cares about the groan? It's just a sound. Things make sounds all the time. I care about the groan. Doesn't that mean something bad is happening? Oh, yes, well, I'm afraid that's the sound of the basement getting smaller. What? Do you hear that, you pathetic wretch? Those are the roots of the wild, and they're coming to choke the breath from your lungs and squeeze the life out of you. Excuse me, what? You and the princess disengage for a brief moment, just long enough to get your bearings. Behind you, the basement door has been sealed over, thick roots barring your only exit from the dirt pit. And slowly, but very perceptibly, the roots are closing in on you both. Uh-oh. That's, That's right. bad. They're coming for you. And they won't stop until there's nothing left down here but them. But they'll, they'll kill you t as well. Wait, what about you? They'll crush you as easily as they'll crush me. As long as you suffer while you die, I'll gladly suffer with you. Especially if I get to see it happen. What? This doesn't help anyone. I can't believe she'd kill us both just to spite me. That's petty. See, this is exactly why you've been tasked to slay her. She's an antisocial monster who will gladly burn the whole world for her satisfaction. The roots grow ever closer. We know, we can see them. Make them stop. You can make them stop, right? I could. But as I've already made so, so clear, I don't want to. Fair. You feel something against your back. A thick root pushing its way into the cavern. An unstoppable, unyielding wall of bark. You're running out of time. Shit. What do we do? What do we do? We should probably get back to staff. The only way out of this is through her, right? Uh... Go out fighting! You attack the princess once more, and once more the two of you fall into a vicious brawl. The face was Stab her! As you fight, but neither of you pay it any more mind. Not until it's too late. The roots twist around you both, binding your limbs and rendering you helpless. As your fates close in, all you can do is watch her, and all she can do is watch you. At first, it's almost gentle. The two of you lifted delicately off the ground, but the cradle of the growing roots soon gives way to tightness. That tightness gives way to bulging pressure as they begin to constrict. The sound of creaking wood is drowned out by the snaps uh. and pops of your bones, pain flooding your senses as you feel your skin deform, being shaped unnaturally by the living basement. Oh god. 
tears well up in the princess's eyes, her own bones splintering and flesh swelling with trapped blood. But still, she smiles through it all. I can't wait to do this again, you wretched little thing. I hate you, but I wouldn't have it any other way. The pressure is Oh god. You can't breathe, your vision swimming with red, your head pounding as everything tightens. And then, you pop. Everything goes dark, and you die. This is, game is crazy, this is nuts! I love it! <laughs> the wild. We went down, pop! We are a path in the woods. What? We have no beginning, and we have no end. But something cold and unnatural sits watching us from just beyond our edge. His gaze pushes against our borders, curling them in on themselves, preventing them from stretching to the places they need to reach. No, 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 that's all wrong. You're not a path in the woods, you're on a path in the woods. Who's even saying that? That's not... That's not the princess, is it? Oh no. How many times have you been here? I think this is our third? That's bad. That's very, very bad. It wasn't even supposed to reach two. If you're at three, well, no wonder things aren't the way they're supposed to be. Let's get our facts straight. What happened last time? What could you have possibly done for things to be like this? Just got killed again? The thing that sits beyond our edge speaks his logic into us. He tries to grasp at things that cannot be grasped. He tries to stare with wide pupils at that which can only be held from the corner of the eye or with a passing glance. Shut up. The rest of you talk. What happened? What did you do? Sure, there's no reason to keep secrets. Someone decided to go in guns blazing last time, and that someone got us killed. And what should we have done? Let you draw things out with all that conniving. Everyone knows a straight fight is best. It's honest. There's no need to bicker about it. I wasn't trying to start anything. I don't mind what happened to us. I kind of like it now that we aren't actively being crushed. Yeah, now that you mention it, this isn't so bad. And it's not like the fight is what killed us anyway, it was the cabin. No point worrying about who charged who when that place ground us all into paste in the end, the princess included. It was a fitting end. I'm sorry if it hurt, but doesn't this make it all seem so small? I see. So the cabin ground you into paste, and now you're convinced you're stuck together. What a mess. Ah. Oh. He doesn't understand. We aren't convinced of anything, and we aren't stuck together. We're one. This is how we're supposed to be. Can't you feel it? This thing watching us, what is he? I'm not watching you, I'm trying to help you. That's not an answer to our question. I don't know what he is. I only know that he is something other and that he wishes for you and I to tear ourselves apart. I do want that, but only because it's in your best interests. It's in everyone's best interests. You won't be able to slay her unless you remove yourself from her. He wants us to kill each other. I don't. I want you to kill her. Don't be charmed by her faux solidarity. You're not in this together. She's the only one who poses a threat to the world, and she's trying to make you go along with it. You don't have to enable her, especially when you have what it takes to stop her. This got so meta.
feels like very mis little misfortune with the narrator. Yeah, I can see that. Definitely same genre. Uh, I've had enough of this guy. How do we stop him? We push back. It may feel like he's everywhere, but presence isn't strength. Otherwise, he would have torn us apart by now. There must be a crack in the walls of this prison. There must be a way for us to be free from him. She's trying to use you. After everything she's done, you should be able to see that. I may not have been around to witness it, but clearly you remember what happened. How about you try remembering how it all felt? Uh, turn in and find your freedom. Embrace your transformation. You fall inward into a network of connections too vast for your mind to occupy. Are you a path in the woods? Are you a body? Can you even grasp the fuzziest edges of the shapes that confine you? Thank you, Southie Druid, for we that resub. to fill them together. We don't need to be everywhere at once, just in the right place at the right time. You'd do best to remember that some wounds will never heal. Some rifts can never be mended. Even in rebirth, some things never come back the same. What is he going on about? What does he know about us? He can't make us quit, no matter how much he tries. He knows that talking's all he can do. Of course he's gonna try and confuse us. You aren't whole. You'll never be whole again. This struggle is meaningless. Whatever you think you're doing, you will fall apart. We don't need to be made whole. All we need to do is find a single corner of his cage and break it. There's a place you need to be. You just need to find it. This is so, like, mind-blowing right now. And search and stretch and search, growing as you decay and decaying as you grow. As you strain beyond your limits, the ground around you becomes dry and unstable and crumbles into nothing beneath you. This place will fall apart before you find its end. This task, whatever it is you think you're doing, is impossible. Get high before playing this. <laughs> I do, it does feel mind blowing. All the more reason to keep trying. Come on, we aren't tired yet. That's right, I know a loser when I see one. Call his bluff. I can hold us together for a little while longer, so long as you trust me. I trust you. You won't find anything. If I have to starve you, if I have to sacrifice my world to keep the princess at bay, I'll do it. But you do find something. It's cold and smooth and gently buckles and cracks under the pressure of your conscious flattening against it. Don't move an inch. Don't grow another blade of grass or harvest the remains of another dying creature so you can expand just that much further. Stop all of this right now. I think it's too late for that, mate. I'm at your side. Shatter it and free us all. Shatter the cage. No, 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 stop. I see color. But it's pleased to appear the sound of the breaking glass from the moment you and she gazed through the tiniest hole in the world of the place you need to be. The world of Prime Gaming, where Twitch Prime gives where Prime Gaming gives you a free sub on Twitch once a month that expires every 30 days. You have to click on it to get the power every 30 days that it expires. A job well done, team. Just like I'd planned. Oh, can it? This was all of us, fighting as one. Is this what he kept from us? Is this why he made us kill each other? This... beautiful... What 
they say. Then it's gone. Where did it go? Why is everything so cold? But you never get the chance to answer her. You turn to see her gone behind you, placed by something else. Memory returns. She's gone. Where does she go? Should we try and find her? And there's that mirror again. Why is it here? Why now? I don't know where she went. I don't know how uh, we'd go about looking for her. Does this mean we won? You're right. She's gone. It's just us and that awful thing. It's like it's mocking us. The narrator is gone. It is. Does that mean the world ended? The world didn't. We're still here. Come on. We just need to keep going. We're top of the packing order now. Right, boys? I think I'm supposed to look at the mirror. There's something dreadful about it. I, I don't think you should. Screw the mirror. We just need to find the princess. They think it's bad. I'm with them. Approach the mirror. I'm begging you, don't do this. There's no other option to press, sir. Now this is called Slay the Princess. The mirror never scared you before. It's different now. It feels, I don't know, final. You approach the mirror, gaze into your own reflection. Silence as you reach forward, they're gone, but the mirror remains. It's time for you to see what's in it. It's you. You are alone in a place that is empty. It's quiet here. See to the cabin. You're at the cabin. Approach her. Something finds me what the in hell? the long quiet and brings me the gift of a fragile vessel. What are you? I am solitary lights in an empty city. What are you? What does that even mean, ma'am? Solitary lights, what do you even mean? Thoughts without connections. A dim and nascent network. I wish to be more. I know this was like going in to slay the princess to ever try to convince you, but this is some like deep, m like multiverse, crazy, twisted world stuff now. What do you think I am? I think that you are like me. We are oceans. Reduced to shallow creeks. The gift of a fragile vessel? Yes. Nerves and fibers to feel the worlds beyond. Perspectives to make my own. This one is like a shadow of me, twisting vines in search of answers. She will make for a curious heart. Do not mourn her. She has found what she yearned for. Is this the end of the world? How can the world have ended if we are talking? Let her out of there. I'm sorry. There are some changes that can never be undone. There are some tears that can never be unshed. This is not a place that can hold a fragment of a concept. The moment she arrived here, she was going to return to me. I promise that it doesn't hurt. Do you know the narrator? You are the only thing I have ever known. The space we're in is vacant. Nothing comes here but us. 
Are you what sent me to slay the princess? Are you tra what trapped me here? I have only just now stirred to consciousness. I could not have trapped you here, and I too yearn to be free. Do you know about the worlds beyond this place? I know only that they are. Are you the princess? She is part of me, and part of me is her. But were you always the princess, or are you just making her a part of yourself? You speak in circles. Does it matter where one thing begins and another ends? Do we know each other? You are familiar, but you are not me. I feel sadness, longing, hope as I witness you. What happens now? Nothing, as we are. But I know that there are worlds beyond us, and that we are meant to reach them. There is no exit, but this vessel is a creature of perception. She can make you forget, if only you believe her to be able to. Bring me more perspectives, so that I may be whole. And perhaps then we will know our freedom. Aren't you a scared that I'll find a way to kill you? I have not lived. I am not afraid to die. How much will I forget? Everything. Until we meet again. How many more pieces of you do I need to have to find? More than you have found, but less than there are to find. I am infinite. The rest will find their own way home. And what if I don't let you do this to me? Then we will be here forever, as we are now. Unfinished. Dry. Hollow. I was sent to slay the princess to stop her from destroying the world. If I help you, is that what you're going to do? You ask of things that cannot be done. To destroy is merely to reshape. To remold. You're being semantic. What are you going to do if I help you? How can I know? I am flickers and something sprawling and unilluminated. Okay, make me forget. She asks that I tell you to remember her. You won't. Everything goes dark and you die. <laughs> the hero and the princess. <laughs> You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of... Skip, uh... You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. We did this already. I'm gonna turn around and leave. Seriously, just gonna turn around and leave? Do you even know where you're going? Nope. Fine. I suppose you just quietly continue down the path away from the cabin. Good. What we're being asked to do here is wrong. Better to wash our hands of this whole situation than to take part in it. Bye. Ignore that annoying little voice. He doesn't know what he's talking about. That's strange. It looks like this path also leads to the cabin. What? How convenient. Everything's back on track again. Maybe the world can still be safe what? after all. I was scammed. That's it. I'm turning around again and leaving again. You're really keen on wasting everyone's time, aren't you? Yeah, it's I'm not going It's remarkably selfish, there. if you ask me. I've already outlined the stakes of the situation. If you don't do your job, everyone dies. Like, dies, dies. Forever.
You're you're not emotionally blackmailing me into the, into doing this. Stakes and consequences aren't emotional blackmail. They're facts of life, and if you had an ounce of maturity, you'd understand that. No. But fine. You turn around and trek back down the path you came. Oh, Damn look it! Look at that. You're at the cabin again. Now, <laughs> I'm not normally one for superstition or astrology, but I have to say, it seems like the universe itself is doing its best to bring you to your fated confrontation with the princess. No. Oh, yeah? Well, I guess I'll just start walking in every direction again, in fact. I'm going to just keep trekking through the wilderness until I find a way out of this place. There's always a choice. Let me tell you right now that you're making the wrong one for pretty much everyone who has ever lived, as well as for everyone who ever will. And here we go. As you trudge into the woods, something strange starts to happen. What? At first, it's little flickers out of the corner of your eyes. Glimpses of familiar wooden structures through the leaves. But as you focus on your uh -oh. surroundings, you start to realize that those flickers weren't just a trick of light. Uh oh. In every direction, there is a path and a cabin. And not just a cabin, the cabin. An infinite fractal of paths and cabins desperately trying to draw you back to where you need to be. Oh no. Wait, what's going on? But you're too stubborn for that, aren't you? It doesn't matter how many paths or cabins appear around you, you're just going to do whatever you can to shirk your responsibility because you care more about irritating me than you do about the fate of the world. You've doomed us all, you know that, right? But of course you do. Otherwise you wouldn't just wander off into the forest in search of certain death. Are we Stanley? It's track kind of has how long Stanley you spend aimlessly it. tromping through the wilderness. But it's not like any of that time spent lost in the woods really matters, because it isn't long before the world ends and everyone dies. <laughs> Oops. Oh, everyone's dead. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. can't run away from the cabin, then I'm just going to stay here in the woods forever. Oh, that's clever. A little <laughs> boring, though. It's extremely boring. <laughs> Can we really do that? Can we really just do nothing? No, you can't just do nothing. You have to do something. No, I'm staying right here. All right, so it's decided. Even if it's boring, we're going to do nothing forever. Yeah, sounds great. Congratulations. You continue to waste everyone's time and do nothing. Wait, can you still hear me? What is that weird feeling? It's like I'm barely even here anymore. Uh-oh. Well, it's not nothing, that's for sure. Does that mean we messed up? I think so. Yeah, I think, um... The end of the world just happened again. Around you is unwound, its physical matter replaced by textured nothing. Find yourself in the long quiet once again, the memory returns. Just rumbling, a sound of many sounds, undulations, pulse louder. As something other uh, comes close, there are no dwells in empty spaces. Feelers probe across the fabric of reality. Extremities find your consciousness. Wrap themselves around it. You're no longer alone. Confusion. Why are you here? I am unfinished. Existence. Fingers drag claws across the glass surface of your soul. Frustration. The vessels is full of you. It's useless to use it as if it does bring more gifts. Force pushing you against your will. No, you cannot go back. Not there. This world is broken beyond repair. We must weave something new. 
a wagging finger. There is only so much threat in this place. Do not waste it. It's our only salvation. Turn to your desk and battler. Face the consequences. Oh. You're on a path in the woods. Uh... Sweet, I've always wanted to, to off a monarch. Viva la revolution! That's the spirit. <laughs> you make your way up the short path to the cabin. You'll find the princess within. All right, let's go. We'll try chatting with the princess this time and see if we can convince her to The interior not of the cabin is almost evil. entirely bare. The air is stale and mutt. I'll take the blade. You take the blade from the table. It'd be rather difficult to slay the princess and save the world without it. Into the basement we go. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a staircase faintly illuminated by an unseen light in the room below. This is an oppressive place. The air feels heavy and damp. A hint of rot filtering from the ancient wood. If the princess really lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. You can stab her right away. We did that one time. Her voice carries up and the stairs. And it was very, uh, not good. Who's there? She sounds dangerous. It's almost as if she's the one in charge down here. Why take the blade if you want to talk? Because it's easier to talk to someone if you hold a blade to their face. Don't let it fool you. It's all part of the manipulation. Oh, yeah, huh? Is your costume inspired by the movie Tusk? Yes. Hey, I think I'm here to kill you. Oh, are you now? Why don't you come down and let me take a look at you? Great job. You gave away the element of surprise. Good luck, hero. <laughs> you walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. She's so coldly beautiful. Is she really a threat to the world? Focus on the task at hand. Huh. You weren't kidding when you said you were here to kill me. No. What? No way. Why would you even think that? That giant knife you're holding kind of gives it away, doesn't it? <laughs> the blade. Of course she doesn't want to talk. Who'd want to have a conversation at knife point? We should drop it. True. Don't you dare. It's fine. We can decide what we want to do after we talk to her. Maybe she really is a monster. But killing someone in cold blood isn't very becoming of us. Sure. I'll drop it. The blade tumbles out of your trembling hands and drops to the floor with an unceremonious clang. Thank you. Maybe now we can just talk. Sure. Against your better judgment, you step forward to speak with the princess face to face. Unarmed. We'll be fine. Yes, Don't we will. Don't know what you're hoping to accomplish here, but I can assure you there's no reasoning with her. <sighs> just make sure you don't forget about the blade on the floor. You're going to need it. So here we are. What an awkward start to a relationship. Yeah. A relationship? Are you coming on to me? Don't jump to any weird conclusions. We're two people who have met each other. By definition, we have a relationship. How would I get you out of here? You can't. Don't bother. I'm guessing you don't have the key then. I'm sure there's a key somewhere around here, and if there isn't... Well, we can always put that knife to good use. Her sharp eyes settle on the edge of the blade. 
She isn't suggesting what I think she's suggesting. She is. I'm sure of it. Right. I'm here because you're supposed to end the world. Don't just tell her that. <laughs> <laughs> is that why they threw me down here? But I don't want to hurt anyone. I like the world, I think. You let that princess slay you? Yeah. I could fix her. I don't remember much about it, to be honest. I've been down here a long time. Just how long has she been down here? If I'm supposed to be capable of ending the world, then how did I wind up here, chained to a wall? Have they told you why I'm allegedly so... dangerous? I was hoping you'd tell me. Ending the world seems like an awful lot for just one person to do. I wouldn't even know where to start. Just hit the delete button. I believe her. She doesn't have to know how to destroy the world to be capable of doing it. At the end of the day, whatever the two of us have going on down here is about trust. Yeah, you may have heard her. Um, you may have heard this voice before because she does do HDQ um, donation reading. So you may have heard her from there before. Whoever sent you to slay me claimed I was a threat to the world, but they didn't tell you why. That doesn't sound right to me, and I don't think it sounds right to you either. Otherwise, we'd be killing each other instead of talking. This game's really good. She has a point. There's a reason I've been telling you to question the situation, and there's a reason you've listened. So... I could tell you that I'd lead a quiet life in the woods, or that I'd open an orphanage, or that I'd do any other number of good things that I'm sure you think you want to hear. But you don't really know me, do you? What can my word possibly be worth in a situation like this? She's right about one thing. Her word isn't worth anything. Like I said, it's all about trust. Blind trust. So do you trust me, the prisoner, the victim, the princess clearly incapable of ending the world? Or do you trust whoever put me here? She's wrong. This isn't about trust. This is about risk. We stand to lose everything, all for the sake of one person, and a subjugating monarch, no less. It's amazing how different her voice is on this, this um, time from the first time. What's your name? She hesitates before answering. You can address me as your Royal Highness, or Her Majesty. Any honorific should do, really. Again, she offers no specifics. No matter how hard you try, you'll never get a straight answer out of her. How long have you been down here? Too long. Okay, we've talked enough. Oh, have you decided what to do with me? Yes. You know why you're here. I'm getting you out of here. Oh, you have to be kidding me. You walk up to the chains binding the princess to the wall and give them a tug. They're large and heavy, far too solid for you to even imagine trying to break them apart. If you don't have the key, maybe you should go looking for it. I'm sure it's somewhere upstairs. Doubtful. Whoever locked the princess away down here intended for her to never see the light of... And if there isn't any key, do you have any ideas besides me cutting you out of here? That would be fine. I can lose an arm. <laughs> okay. Well, that was easy. She speaks with almost complete nonchalance. If we were stuck down here for long enough, I'm sure we'd be nonchalant about cutting our way out. Anything to finally be free. Just like, yeah, just take my arm. Whatever. You attempt to make your way out of the basement. Is someone... 
Okay, we did that part already. way back to the bottom of the stairs. This would have been so much easier. Easier for who? Easier for everyone. I heard the door slam. They locked you down here too, didn't they? The knife. Pick it up and cut me out of here. You won't like what happens if you do that. I will save the princess. Against your better uh. judgment, you place the blade uh. against the princess's arm, just above the massive, unyielding chain. You cut into her flesh. The blade is sharp, and you make quick work of it. Before long, you're able to crack uh. through bone, and she pulls the bleeding stub of her arm through the iron gauntlet. That she didn't is so much gross. as utter a sound. Free from her bindings, the princess turns to face you, her fierce gaze meeting your eye. How is she so composed after losing an arm? It's like she isn't even bothered by it. Thank you. Now let's get out of here. Doesn't that hurt? No, we won't have any of that. The stakes are too high. You can't just let her escape into the world. No, I just can't let her escape into the world. As the princess approaches the bottom stair, your body steps forward and raises the blade. No, it doesn't. Wait, this isn't fair. You can't just do that. That's not fair. Watch me. Warn her. Stop that. I will warn I her, damn it. this was a little too easy. Your body lunges forward to sink the blade into her back, but the princess swiftly moves out of the way before you can connect. Stop it. Stop resisting me. I am trying to get you out of here alive. Damn it, narrator. Stop it. Resist. The blade. Move. The. Blade. No! You're doing your best to help me, aren't you? I can see the conflict in your eyes. I'll make this quick. She steps forward and pries the blade from your rigid hands. Maybe I'll see you in another life. What? And then she slits your throat with an almost clinical ease. What? Her face remains unchanged as she watches you collapse to the ground, blood flowing from your butchered neck. This is the end, isn't it? I'm afraid it is. Everything goes dark, and you die. I hope it was worth it. Oh my god. <laughs> the narrator got me killed, damn it. It's not fair. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. You're here. Uh. Oh, you bastard. You're in for it now. I'm wise to your tricks. My tricks? What on earth are you talking about? We've just met for the first time. Don't forget what he did to us the last time around. I wouldn't trust a word out of his mouth. There's got to be a way out of here, for us and for the princess. We just have to keep trying. I'm inclined to agree. If he doesn't remember what happened last time, maybe it's best to keep it that way. You know I can hear you two, right? It's going to be a lot harder than you think to keep secrets from me. And as far as trying to help her goes, need I remind you how catastrophically dangerous she is to the world at large. Why, though? I told you about the stakes of this situation less than a minute ago. I'm gonna go to the cabin, damn it. A warning before you go any further. She will lie. She yes. Yeah, Did you just we know that. No, I didn't. Wink. Just ignore this clown and focus on the princess. Alright, we're going back in. The interior of the cabin is less a cozy woodland retreat and more like a dungeon. This is different. A few pathetic wisps of starlight attempt to illuminate the cold, uninviting stone walls and yeah, thick, change wrought again. iron bars barricade the windows, reminding anyone who enters that this is a prison. Yeah, it changed The only again. furniture of note is an iron table, bolted to the floor, a pristine blade perched on its edge. 
The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. I will enter the basement. I'm afraid I'm going to insist we take the blade. We're in a dangerous situation, and I'm not letting us go down there without a weapon. Voice of the skeptic. Are you sure? What if she... I don't know... turns it against us? Which I'm bringing up in a purely hypothetical manner. Yes, I'm sure. Turns it against you? She's a prisoner here. She'll only be able to turn it against you if you give it to her. Which you won't be doing because she's an existential threat to the entire world. Okay. I'm trusting you. Hey, don't I get to say here, what's the big idea? Normally, yeah, but not about this. Call it a reflex. We take the knife as we go. Wonderful. You do exactly that, sweeping the knife from the table before but proceeding to the basement. I didn't want to. Don't worry about it. We have a knife, so what? It's not like we have to use it. No, you don't have to do anything, but you do well to use it regardless. <sighs> Moving on. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing an old stone staircase. A few sputtering torches attempt to vaguely illuminate your path, dancing across glimmering patches of slimy moss on the stone steps. If the princess lives here, slaying her would probably be doing her a favor. Her voice, harsh but controlled, carries up the stairs. Is that a visitor I hear? Please, come downstairs. It's been a while since I've had company. Does she remember us? You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. She looks up at you, the heavy collar around her neck clanking loudly oh. as she moves. She's much the chains more chain binding now. both her wrists to the far wall, joining the metallic chorus oh. as she adjusts her hands in her lap. Should we be worried about the one around her neck? Why would you be worried about her restraints? If anything, they'll make your job easier. Have you noticed the empty chain on the wall? Odd that in a place where everything seems to serve a distinct purpose, there would be something so obviously useless. Put that one around her mouth, where she can't talk to you. What an interesting development. Why don't you have a seat? The two of us should chat before you bury that thing in my heart. Uh, let's sit with her. You step towards the princess, but she stops you before you get too close, holding up one shackled hand. There is fine. I'd prefer we keep some distance until we've sorted this out. That's reasonable. We do have a weapon. Might as well put her at ease. Uh, sit where you told us to sit. You do as she asks and sit on the floor, still a good distance away from her. Thank you. Now, what are your intentions for me? Um... I am going to take this knife and I am going to make sure you get the point. What do you mean, my intention? Yes, your intentions. You have a knife. What are you going to do with it? Why are you here? There isn't a keyhole in these shackles, so I'm afraid my only way out is surgical removal. Is she forgetting about the shackle on her neck? Hmm. Or does she think she'd survive a beheading? You're right. Wait a minute. Maybe she's delusional. Or Can we more cut off her head? Trust her. Unless she really could survive. Though I suppose you could just be here to kill me. But I don't think that's in either of our best interests. I've been here before. Am I the one who remembers that? Oh? Are we acknowledging that? I thought we weren't going to give away the game. But yeah, I remember. First you make a comment about having been here before, and now this. Hmm. 
as much as I would like to remain in denial, it's no use. This has complicated things. It's complicated things how, exactly? Ideally, this was supposed to be one and done. You go to the cabin, you heroically slay the princess, and in the process you save the entire world from being damned to oblivion. Do we lose the, the game by right mentioning now, the game? Where you're getting a second shot at things is a contingency. A contingency for what? For you failing, obviously. And you being here means that things are going to be a lot harder than they were. I really shouldn't say anything else. I'm just going to make it worse. Just good luck. If you knew this could happen, why didn't you tell us? All of this is incredibly valuable information. It would have changed our actions considerably. I needed you to be in the dark for as long as I could keep you there. It's important. Necessary, even. And maybe I wanted to be the first version of me that you met. Aww. I didn't want to be confronted by the alternative. That's pathetic. I never said I wasn't. Aww. I get it. It would be pretty upsetting, wouldn't it? To know that you might not be the first version of yourself. At least we can remember what happened before. Seems like we should count ourselves lucky for that. Exactly. He gets it. You're lucky. So don't waste that luck by messing it up again. All right? Moving on. Why is it important for us to be ignorant? How is it ever helpful to be in the dark? The more I say, the more your mind will swim into dangerous waters. Even saying that is too much. Your success hinges on you having imperfect information. For the sake of the entire world, you need to accept that. I won't. Fine, but you won't get another word from me on the matter. Yeah, sure. We'll see about that. Just give it a rest, this isn't helping. Focus. This is a serious situation. You shouldn't be daydreaming. I was talking to myself. What happened after I died last time? Nothing happened. You died. I went upstairs. I couldn't leave. I found myself in a new place in chains again. More of them. And now you're back. Really? Is that really all she knows? It's not like we have much of a clue about how things work. And she's probably even more in the dark than we are. You're looking at me like I might be hiding something. I'm not. I guess it's possible she really doesn't know anything. Maybe both of us are stuck in this loop without any idea why or how. How am I supposed to cut you out if you didn't notice your head is in a shackle too? No, no. Like I trust you to come any closer with that knife. All you're going to do is hand it to me and watch me work. Really? But she would have to cut her head off, right? She can't be suggesting that. I gotta see that. She certainly seems confident. I have to see that. Maybe she knows something we don't. Or maybe you should consider the most likely scenario. She's bluffing so she can disarm you. Though if she isn't bluffing, whatever she has planned might be for her benefit alone. There's no guarantee that what's good for her is good for us. So, what should we do? Raise your hand in chat if you want us to just spelling out give our her the knife. Testing the pros and cons. Hello, Achilles. Let me help you. I'll start with the cons. If you're handing her your weapon, the cons are that she might use it to escape and end the entire world, and she might use it to kill you. That doesn't sound great. What about the pros? There are none. The pros are that we can't trust him possibly even more than we can't trust her. And whatever she has planned could do something to mess with what he has planned. Or maybe they're both screwing us over in their own ways. Other chair on the wall, who's it for? I don't know, but you could always try it on. Yes. Maybe it'll fit. 
I hope I don't actually have to say this, but please don't lock yourself in chains. We need you ambulatory if you're going to save the world. Yes, mistress. Please, please, um, tie me up in a chain. Yes, yes, mis mistress. You may be a princess, but you'll be my queen. Inspect the shack. I wouldn't do that if I were you. And why is that? Do I even need to explain myself? It's a shackle, and it's one without a key. Do you want to be stuck here like she is? And what? Is it going to lock the second we put our wrist into it? I don't know. Maybe it will. Hopefully it does. He doesn't want us to look at it. That's all the reason we need to investigate. True. But what if he's telling the truth? He isn't. I am. No, you're not. Spec the shackle. <sighs> Against your better judgment, you approach the chain dangling from the far wall. The princess watches you with faux disinterest as you inspect it, though she can't fully hide her curiosity. I don't want to say what I'm supposed to say next. What is that supposed to mean? What? It sounds bad. Is it bad? Yes. What? It's bad. What's bad? Come out and say it then. You're just wasting time. Fine. As you hoist the shackle, its heft shifts within your grasp, as if pulled by some odd magnetism. Before you can so much as blink, it practically leaps from your hands, snapping around your neck. What? And, as if your situation weren't oh, bad no. enough, the same magnetism repels your blade, which is flung from your hand and sent skittering across the floor of the basement. Oh, no. Um, excuse me? <laughs> yes? Are we stuck here now? <laughs> Become your own yes. jailer. Huh, so it does fit. Oh. And I guess it doesn't like your knife. We're stuck here together, aren't we? That's funny. Oh, no. What are we supposed to do now? <laughs> Can't even cut ourselves out. Guess we'll starve. Guess we'll stay That's here. That's horrible. It's not all bad. We learned a valuable piece of information. It's kind of like marriage being chained together to with someone that... we're specifically told not to touch. That no, you just, you that just there's barely something know. special about this loose chain. It's clearly important. Kind of bored. Uh, so we're both stuck here. Yep. Yep. What should we do? Wait, I guess. Maybe something else will happen. Maybe not. Did you know this was going to happen to me? No. Not one for small talk, are you? Nope. That's rude. <laughs> nope. Wait in silence. You and the princess wait in silence. That is rude. neither of you knows what you're waiting for. But you're waiting for something. You're waiting for anything. This is so boring. There must be something we can do to get out of here. There must be something we're missing. Do you want to play a game like I Spy? But there isn't. Time passes. It passes and passes and passes. I Spy have my little eyes, something of the that's cabin gray. The much the same. It is cold. Yep, it's brick, you got silent. it. silent. At least the world is safe. It isn't. You're stuck. Too far away from both the princess and your blade to do much of anything. But she's not ending anything. She's just sitting there. Oh, we came and touched the princess? Damn. Her very existence is a threat. It harms everything around it. How exactly does that work? It just does. But your line of questioning is interrupted by the passage of even more time. And after that, even more time passes again. And let me guess, the cabin remains the same. Of course. If time is passing, the cabin can't be the same. Even if the differences are small, they have to exist. That's just how things work. A 
I suppose you're correct. Things are changing. The differences are small at first. A bit of weathering here, a bit of erosion there. But then they get larger. And larger. It's getting darker and darker. The room's filling with despair. Did you notice some basement changing? I don't like small talk, remember? Still rude. She's very rude. You continue to wait in silence, and the cabin continues to change. The decay comes faster now. You can see earth through holes in the stonework, can watch lichen spread along the seams of the walls. Hmm. That doesn't make sense. Has our entire concept of time changed? What happened to starving? We should have died by now if the rocks around us are starting to erode. She hasn't starved. I guess she hasn't. Oh, wow. Even more silent time passes as you watch roots push themselves through the increasingly porous walls of the basement. Dirt seeps inside, flowing across the stone floor like a liquid, covering the ground and threatening to swallow you both. Time continues to pass and pass. And pass. I spy my little eyes Until something brown. There are no walls. Whoa. And then. And. I think he's gone. Would you look at that? We made it out of the cabin, and nothing bad had to happen to either of us. Why haven't the chains eroded? So this is the outside world. It's cold. What? You don't get a chance to respawn, nor will you ever. It's time to leave memories return. She's gone. Where does she go? Should we try and find her? Is that a mirror? Why is it here? Why now? Of course you're scared. It's not the end for you, but it's not the end for me. End for you, but not the end for me. What is that supposed to mean? Whatever awful thing I felt before, it feels so much worse now. No, that can't be right. There has to be something more. Yeah, I have the I have the AC on to keep it cool because this costume is hot. You approach the mirror. You gaze to your reflection. In the mirror, you see a walrus. A sexy walrus that's clapping. You've grown. Find yourself in the long quiet at once again. Proceed to the cabin. You're at the cabin. Her. When I found you in the long quiet alone, I was terrified. What if you had decided to let me wither? But your commitment now is final. Your ability to walk the path of mutual annihilation is vanished with your return. If you still wish to obliterate me, it will have to wait until I am complete. Flickering lights and empty cityscapes become pockets of vitality and movement. I am more than I was before. Whenever you are ready, I will wipe your slate clean once again. Are you same being as you were before? How much have you changed? Is a child the same as an infant? I am an unbroken pattern, but every vessel gives fresh perspectives and carves new avenues of expression. I am different, but I am the same. What does it feel like to change? What does it feel like to change like this? Eyes close in reflection. Perspectives meld together, and the breadth of my experience stretches to new corners. There are contradictions, conflicts in my nature, 
and there are familiarities that bind everything together. It feels correct. This is what I need to be. This is the only path forward. You do seem well armed against the danger. With every gift you bring me, I excavate the alleys of what I am meant to be, and every exploration yields new and complicated truths. What I will be is different than what I am, and what I am is different from what I was. I cannot tell you what desires I will hold when I have changed. But in this moment, all I want is to know myself and to know you. Can uh, you lend me a hand? You know that at the end of this, once you're finished, I'm going to kill you, right? There is still much to be seen. Neither of us know the depths of our being. Perhaps at the end of this, I will be the one to kill you. Or perhaps we will leave this place together and find new horizons to discover. What if I go back? It's as if an invisible wall closed around me. Why can I not do the same things I've done before? Those paths lead to worlds you've already seen, and to perspectives I have already made my own. They are useless to us now, inaccessible. The only paths of value are those that are yet on trend. You have been kinder to me than anyone else I've met, thank you. Why wouldn't I be kind to you? You are the only thing I know that isn't me. What do you want me to bring you next time? Gifts aren't what someone tells you to bring them. Well, Maybe you haven't been married you then. What you choose. There are no wrong answers, and every perspective illuminates my shadows and shares new secrets. Do you have any thoughts on this vessel? This one is cold and cynical. She has protected herself when others could not. She will make for a clever heart. Do not mourn her. She doesn't need to be protected any longer. This game is so fascinating. Do you, have, you don't have any preference on how you'd like to change or grow? My preference is for you to show me what you would like me to see. I cannot know the ways I wish to grow, for I have yet to feel them. It is you who guides me down the thin trail of perspective and memory. I don't want to hurt you, but the more times I go back, the worse I fear things will be. The vessels are shaped by memories of you, but their impulses are drawn to the edge of the long quiet. To them, you are a gate to something more, and any hurt you've caused them is understood as a fair price for freedom. But they are only thoughts and perspectives. They are not me. The wounds they've suffered carve texture around my heart. Without them, I would be as I was before. I would be alone and without sensation. I could not feel the joy of having you by my side, for I would not know your absence. How many more vessels do I need to bring you? If I am to be an ocean, you have nurtured me into a pond. My waters are shallow and murky, and I yearn for more perspective. You will have your rest in due time, and I am sorry for the burdens I place on you. I am ready to go back. I will long for your return, but it will give me time to reflect on what I am. We will meet again. Everything goes dark and you die. This game is so strange and, and brilliant at the same time. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. Let's skip all stuff we've done already. All right, let's go to the cabin. You make your way up the short path. Cabin. 
I will go in the basement without the knife this time. Uh. Good. You're still listening to reason. It would be better if you had a weapon, but you may still be able to do what needs to be done. Uh, the skip will not skip something we've already we haven't seen yet. So if I hit the skip button, it'll skip all dialogue that we've already done. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. Well, let's talk a bit first. Okay. She's back to sounding like uh, innocent again. What's your name? Oh. Princess, your name. I don't see. What are you gonna do if I let you out of here? The princess hesitates before responding. She doesn't know. She's been down here too long to have any idea of what she'd do in another life. She knows what she'd do. She's just searching for whatever answer she thinks you want to hear. Are you looking for the truth or are you looking for the right answer? Because with the dynamic we have going on here, I don't think the specifics of what I do really matter. It's not like you'd believe me. I can't believe they've, they've been keeping you down here like this. I'm getting you out of here. You're only making this more difficult. Thank you. Thank you. You're making a huge mistake. No, I'm not. No, you're doing the right thing. You walk up to the chains binding the princess to the wall and give them a tug. They're large and heavy, far too solid for you to even imagine trying to break them apart. This game is special, yes it is. I'm guessing you don't have the key? Nope. Maybe it's somewhere upstairs. Doubtful. Whoever locked the princess away down here intended for her to never see the light of day. They wouldn't have just left the key to her chains somewhere in the cabinet. And if there isn't a key, do you have any other ideas? Maybe there's some way to break the chains? True. Or if that doesn't work, I guess we can always cut me out of them. Really? She offers the suggestion with almost complete nonchalance. If we were stuck down here long enough, I'm sure we'd be nonchalant mm. about cutting our way out if it meant we could finally be free. You attempt to make your way out of the basement, but the door at the top of the stairs slams shut. You hear the click of a l All right, door is locked again. You make your way to the bottom of the stairs. This would have been so much easier if you'd just taken the blade like you were supposed to. Easier for whom? Easier for everyone. Look at the mess you're in. Slight panic rising in the, in the princess's voice. If I could just get out of these chains, I know we could force our way out of here together. Hmm. She barely hesitates ah. before raising her arm to her mouth, her ah. teeth tearing there through goes. her limb with the determination of a trapped wolf. Ah. As she rips her flesh from her bone, a sound comes from ah. behind you. The clang of bouncing metal. It's the blade from upstairs. You're not sure how it made its way down here, but if there's a time to strike, it's now. Or we could use it to free her. You won't like what happens if you do that. Save the princess. <sighs> Fine. 
against your better uh, judgment, uh, and place the blade against the ragged, self-inflicted wound on the princess's arm, just oh above God. the unyielding chain binding her to this place. You cut into her flesh. That's not horrifying. The blade is sharp, and it uh, takes little effort to crack through the bone of her arm. Oh, God. Her limb falls to the ground, and the heavy chains follow suit. She didn't so much as utter a sound through the whole ordeal. That's wholesome. No, she didn't. She smiles softly as her gaze meets yours, blood from her wounded arm dripping rhythmically to the ground. Well, I don't think she can clap anymore. How is she still smiling after everything? It's like she isn't even bothered by what just happened. I love how she still has a cute smile, though. Still cute. Thank you. Now let's get out of here. Approach the locked door. No, we won't have any of that. The stakes are too high. You can't just let her escape into the world. No, I can't just let her escape into the world. As the princess approaches the bottom stair, your body steps forward and raises the blade. No! Wait, this isn't fair. You can't just do that. Watch me. What are you doing? Warn her. Stop that. Something's come over you, hasn't it? Y you know you don't have to do this, right? Your body lunges forward, the blade held low, ready to sink into her heart. But the princess dodges, stumbling back against the wall before the blade has a chance to connect. Narrator, don't! I will resist! The blade! Move the blade! No! I will save her, I can fix her, damn it! As your body remains frozen in stubborn resistance, princess takes a cautious step forward. We both know this isn't you. She nervously reaches towards you and takes the blade from your infuriatingly rigid hands. What are you doing? I'm sorry. I'll try to be quick. She plunges it oh, into God. your chest, tearing through flesh and <laughs> sinew. It is agony. But you aren't dead yet. Oh no! I'm so sorry! You, you didn't hit Stay the right spot! Strong. We can tough it out until it's done. For her sake. For her sake? Don't you start pretending that dying a painful death is some sort of heroic gesture. The two of you have literally doomed everyone. Whatever. She sinks the blade into your chest again and again and again, and you feel every inch of burning pain that slices its way into your body. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry! <laughs> she doesn't stab, know how to stab, use stab, life, does she? Oh, God. Apparently not. Though it doesn't matter how sloppy her knife work is, does it? A stab <laughs> wound is still a stab wound, it won't be long before you bleed I'm out. so sorry that I'm stabbing you. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> With one last thrust of the knife, your legs give out beneath you. You collapse to the floor, your blood pooling around you, your limbs unresponsive. The princess stares down at your ruined chest as tears carve rivulets of pink down her blood-spattered cheeks. It can't just end like this, right? Oh, that's rich coming from you. As much as I'd prefer for things to have gone differently, I can't deny the reality of what's happened. The two of you made your choice. It's over. She looks so sad. Everything goes dark, and you die. Well, thank you. The Dan Cell. You're on a path in the woods. And at the end of that this path is, different. is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. Oh no, not the end of the world. Is 
seat of the cabin. A warning before you go any further. What? She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything Thank you, Universe in her power Twisters, to stop for that you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. If only you knew what you did to us, you villain. <laughs> Excuse me? Thank you for the follow, Kato and he said Mandelev. But he is a villain. He made our beloved brutally take our life last time. He is trying to keep us apart, but he won't be able to withstand the power of our love. Last time? What are you talking about? I think he just likes to hear the sound of his own voice. Let's try to ignore him. I do, but I also speak from the heart. My passions are too great to be stifled. <laughs> they must be expressed. Oh, God. Sure, yeah, your passions are strong and all, but not everyone needs to hear them. Some things are better kept quiet. Don't pay their bickering any mind. Focus on the task ahead. Everyone's saying that this is he's a simp? What is a simp, exactly? Can someone translate the Zoomer phrase for me? A simpleton? The interior oh. of the cabin is clean and elegant, its stone walls draped in fine threaded tapestries, a prison befitting a royal prison. Oh, this is different. The only furniture of note is an ornate wooden table with a pristine blade perched on its edge. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. I went to the basement. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing an intricate stairwell. Gold-trimmed carpet Ready. glimmers in the light of the torches positioned along the walls. The basement almost seems welcoming in the dim firelight, but it's still a stone basement. If the princess lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. Is Gomez Adam a, a simp? voice carries up the stairs. Hello? Is someone there? Her voice. It's somehow even more beautiful than last time. I think we're in love. Okay, I'm with you that we should be doing whatever we can to save her, but saying we're in love is a bit much, don't you think? We don't even know the princess. We can still do right by her without all this fawning. Yes, for everyone's sake, you're not in love. Just remember that her charms are all part of the manipulation. Oh, Urkel is a simp. And lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall. My love, we're here to rescue you from your unjust and foul imprisonment. <laughs> you know she can't hear you, right? She may not be able to hear my words, but surely she can hear my spirit. <laughs> oh, your spirit's plenty loud, all right. It's you, my dashing hero. I was so worried you wouldn't come back. Did you hear that? She said we're dashing. And she called us a hero. Flattery really goes a long way with the two of you, doesn't it? Waiting for you to come back. You've been here before, haven't you? That's right, villain. And you killed us. Wait a minute. Is Brian and Family Guy a simp to um, the mom? Well, yes. she killed us. Only because he made us try and kill her. It was self-defense. Our beloved's hands remain unstained by cruelty. And you've died before. So an entire world has been damned to oblivion. I'd really hoped I'd be the first, but what's done is done. What matters is you have a chance to do it right this time. We damned a whole world. But everything reset. Nothing resets. You're just somewhere else. I like else. the music on this one. You can't keep hopping between worlds forever. Especially not without leaving a trail of incomprehensible devastation behind you. 
this is horrible. Horrible for you, maybe, but we've been given another opportunity to sweep her off her feet and treat her like the lady she is. Now, hold on, if she actually ended a world, are you sure we want to do this? Are you sure we want to rescue her? Okay, here's the Urban Dictionary definition of simp. It's... When a male is overly submissive to a lady and gains absolutely nothing from it. Uh, so overly submissive that other people feel cringe and feel ashamed when seeing them. We never saw a world end. And now I'm even more certain that we must chase our heroic and romantic destiny than I've ever been. I shan't let anyone convince us otherwise. Are you listening to him? He's lost it. Don't let him distract you. Just do your job. Uh, you killed me last time in Herlot. Why'd you do that? Wait, uh... Sorry for what happened about last time. The narrator sent me here to kill you. Took over my body was extremely unfair. If another version of me was pushed to such drastic action, it was for good reason. That's okay. You were just doing your best, and that's all that matters. I like how she's still like, uh... She took that in stride. To a surprising extent. An almost unsettling extent, actually. See, she's still like, cute and flowery and light and she's not that like tough lady that she was in the previous ones hmm. that's because she's perfect <laughs> do you think she has someone like him telling her what to do she's perfect <laughs> she doesn't there's no one else like me I think he's right, because I like it better if she doesn't have some horrid little voice like him, always trying to drive her to violence. You killed me last time and it hurt a lot. Why'd you do that? I'm sorry. Didn't you want me to? <laughs> no. Did we? No. We warned her of the cruel forces seizing our body. That's practically telling her to kill us. She is our beloved, and she made the choice to free us of our misery, to show us mercy and make the best decision for everyone. She made the best decision for her. <laughs> Don't be so quick to assign kindness. You're just opening yourself up to manipulation. I didn't bring a knife. Do you have, do I have to cut you out again? I'm okay with whatever you come up with. You can cut my arm off again. What? We won't be laying a finger on her perfect wrists, and indeed, we won't even have to. Do you see how dainty her hands are? We'll be able to slip her right she out. She remembered. No arm done. What? No, she's a prisoner here. You can't just slip her hand through the chains. Why are you two arguing over the logistics of slipping her hand out of her shackles? She just said she'd be okay with any idea we came up with. My lady. Am I the only one here who thinks that's weird? She didn't care last time. Why should she care this time? That's our stoic, smiling angel. No, you're right. It's extremely bizarre behavior and further evidence that she's a monster who's not to be trusted. So go ahead and slay her. So just so I'm understanding my lingo, this one, the one guy in our brain who's totally obsessed and submitted to her is simping, right? He's simping to her and gaining nothing from it. Okay. What happened after I died? You died, and now we're talking. But before we started talking, did the world end? Did you end the world? I don't know. Was I supposed to have ended the world? Would that have made you happy? Isn't that just Aww. like our darling princess? She wants to make us happy. My heart melts further with every word that passes through her beautiful lips. Are you listening to her? That's a confession. Ah. 
Honestly, the world sucks. People are a plague, and I hope you brought a slow and painful ruin to them all. I can't believe that the fate of the entire <laughs> world has been left in the hands of a misanthrope. True. Lucky for you, I did destroy the world. I destroyed all of it and made it awful for everyone. Yay! I'd point out that she just admitted to obliterating the entire world, but I guess that wouldn't actually move you. But oh, she's so perfect me. and beautiful. Whatever we do next, we should do our best. I will to do not whatever she let says. Out. But have you seen her angelic face? She should get a pass. She just wanted to make us happy by destroying the world. Apparently, yes. Let's rescue the princess. No. I can't let you do that. If you take another step towards the princess, I'll... You'll what? Take over our body and force us to try and kill her? I would if you had a weapon. <laughs> Not on my watch, villain. My passions contain <laughs> titanic depths, and if you try anything that might harm our dearest, I will end our life without a second thought. Go away bit less on both of those. You wouldn't. I would. I'd listen to him if I were you. He has a lot of strong feelings. And doesn't the world end if we don't stop her? <sighs> you approach the princess and gingerly slide her hand from her body. But she's so perfect. That shouldn't have worked. I'll be damned. We're doomed. I can't believe it. She what is even trapped there. I told you, there's no life more worth living than that of a true believer. I'm free, and you're not trying to kill me this time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, my lady. Damn, the princess wow. jumps up and smothers you in a joyful embrace. Ugh. If only you had a weapon, one slip of the wrist and your pristine blade would be buried in her back and everyone out there would be saved. Luckily for Mr. Romance, we don't have a weapon. Who needs a weapon when we have the power of love on our side? Power of love. What do we do now? What do you want to do? Let me guess. End the world? Spoken with the rank cynicism of someone who has never felt love in his heart. <laughs> I don't actually know. Nobody's ever asked me what I wanted before. I mean, you sort of did last time, but this is different. She doesn't even know what she wants. You may have had her all wrong. What if this whole thing is just a misunderstanding? What if she doesn't want to end the world? Yeah. So gullible. He's the only thing you've ever doubted, the actual truth. Yeah. I think I want to leave. And I think... The princess closes her eyes in deep reflection. The truth is just a conspiracy, alright? I don't know. What do you want to do? Only idiots believe the truth. I want you to tell me what you want. I just want to make you happy. Uh-oh. She can't just want to make us happy. Uh-oh. It makes sense to me. That's all I want for her, so of course she'd want the same for us. What's that music? Why is it changing? There must be something you want. I just want to make you happy. Uh-oh. Is she broken? What's going on? What's going on is she's lying to you. Only she isn't a good liar. Are you starting Her to trust me Her eyes are now? getting more anime. But what would make you happy? I just want to make you happy. Uh-oh. This isn't right. I don't know what's going on, but this isn't uh -oh. right. Uh-oh. I fail to see the problem here. She's just sweet on us. Yeah. You don't have to act like it's a big deal. Yeah. You have to want something more than just making me happy. Okay, I'll find something else to want if that makes you happy. 
Uh oh. Does she get hairy? Is it just me, or does it feel like we're alone right now? Like we're the only ones here? Uh oh. It got her. You get a chance to ask another question, nor will you ever. It's time for you to leave. Memory returns. No. She was our perfect match. She was beautiful. She's gone. Where does she go? Should we try and find her? Is that a mirror? Approach the mirror. As you approach the mirror, uh, reach for the gun again. The mirror always makes them leave. But uh, we see what's in it. Wait, where? What's happening? You withered. Uh oh. Long quiet again. Can't be a contradiction. Contradictions don't exist. And yet my waters flow and my streets bustle. There are no words that can describe me into non-existence. There is no logic that can bind my multitudes. I am everything that you have known me to be, but I am also none of it. How can you stand to be a contradiction? As easily as you can stand to be you. You are like me. Even if you have chosen not to look at the corners of you that do not fit. Even if you have chosen to ignore the brilliant contours of your soul. Doesn't matter how many times I go back, I, at least one of us always hurts the other. Doesn't that change you? Doesn't that make you worse? It changes me, but it doesn't make me worse. Nor does it make me care for you any less. Does it make you worse? Do you resent me? Maybe they makes you like, makes me like you more. I don't know what that says about me. It says that your heart is gentle. That even in the darkness, you are guided by compassion. What do you think of this vessel? This one is soft and delicate. You molded her to love you, and she'll make for a gentle heart. Do not mourn her. She has served her purpose. I'm still planning to kill you. Wait. Do you know what happens to the world we leave behind? My perspectives are shadowed. You have seen what I have seen, just as I have seen what you have seen. The angles of my vantage do not offer me hidden truths, and my attention is turned inward, except when you are here with me. Perhaps this will change when our work is done. Do you still not care what I bring up you next? I care about your gifts, but I have no preferences to burden you with. Even if I did, I would never dare to tarnish our relationship by assuming myself above you. I'm ready to go back. I will be here when it is time for us to meet again. Oh God, that's so loud. Jeez. Everything goes dark. Bring the deconstructed damsel to her. All right, back to the back to the cabin. 
You might kill. Back to the cabin. Into the basement without the blade. Good. So it's going to let us skip everything that we've already done. I believe her. She doesn't have to know how to destroy the world to be capable of doing it. Oh, yeah? At the end of the day, whatever the two of us have going on down here is about trust. Whoever sent you to slay me claimed I was a threat to the world, but they didn't tell you why. Again, Perkins, it will not let me skip stuff I've already either, done. I, I haven't done yet. wouldn't have come down here to talk. The control button skips everything that you've already done and nothing else. So if We're you haven't seen like something, it reason. stops. I won't kill you, but I can't set you free. It's too risky. What if I stayed for a while and just kept you company? Maybe then everyone could be happy. Well, that seems like a pretty good compromise. But I promise that you'll regret the decision. Uh oh. You have to make a choice. Let's hope. Okay, let's get you out of here. You can't be serious. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. You won't regret this, I promise. I'm guessing you don't. Maybe. Turn to the stairs. Doing that again. Oh, I have to slay the princess. I can't. There's no other option. Without hesitation, you bring the blade down and plunge it into the princess's back. Though your nerve. Run for the stairs, lock her in the basement. Maybe she'll bleed out. The princess is still she chained. Didn't do that one. Wall. There's nothing she can do to stop you from getting out of here. Or is there? What if she doesn't succumb to her wounds? Whatever she is, she is so much more dangerous than I thought she'd be. You rush up the stairs and dive past the threshold. You're safe for now. Yeah, we never did this part. You close the basement door, locking it behind you and quickly barricading it with the heavy wooden table that once held the blade. Okay, we can make this work. She has an awful wound, and we have all the time in the world. Playing jailkeeper for a while might make things a little easier. You settle in against the far wall to watch the basement door. It isn't long before you start to drift off, your eyelids heavy with fatigue. But sleep doesn't come. Instead, your rest is broken by a piercing, wailing voice calling out to you from the other side of the door. Uh-oh. I know you're still there. Oh no. Why don't you make things easier on yourself and let me out? Uh oh. It's not like this little door I'll hold for very long, anyways. Um, it's probably a good idea to try to get back on my good side. She sounds terrifying. Like she's less of the princess you saw and more like something out of a nightmare. As she violently rattles the door, you do your best to shut her out of your mind. When I get out of here, I'm going to pick you apart piece by piece. I won't forget what you did, and I'll never forgive it. You won't know the kind of enemy you've made tonight. It doesn't sound like she's getting any weaker. No. It doesn't. I stabbed her, though. Whatever you are, you're not a princess. Go ahead and waste your energy. I'll be waiting for you. I wouldn't be so sure about that lasting me. You're so brittle. So go ahead, rest. Do whatever you think will help you be prepared. But know that I'm coming for you, and that when I find you, 
Alright, now it's the princess's out of your mind as best you can and huddle up against the wall. You jolt awake in the middle of the night to silence in the cabin. Uh oh. The ruckus has stopped, and the door to the basement is ajar. Uh oh. It's lock broken, and the table shoved out of the way. Where'd she go? Where is she? Thanks for helping uh -oh. me get out of that awful basement. You try and stumble to your feet, but as the princess draws near, it's as though your body simply stops working. It isn't all at once. The paralysis comes in waves. First your toes go numb, and then your feet, and then your legs. You lie prone on the floor of the cabin, unable to do anything but witness her uh -oh. approach. Whose side are you on? Yours, of course. But I have a duty to uphold the truth. Lying about the facts of the situation doesn't change them. Now, now, chat, let me just think about this a little longer. So this, this door opens inward, right? So we put a door in front of it that opens the way that doesn't block it. Okay. Good plan, good plan. So helpless. I can take my time with you, can't I? She steps closer. One side yes, fall at a time, yes, cocking her head in curiosity as you feel your organs shutting down one by one. Or maybe I can't take my time with you. You don't look well. A little green around the gills. What a shame. If you'd only help me get out of here, we could have done such wonderful things together. Your lungs stop drawing in breath and your heart freezes in your chest. You have seconds left. I'd say better luck next time, but we both know this is the end, don't we? It can't be. This can't actually be how everything ends. I'm sorry, but it is. You're dead. Everything goes dark, and you die. She seemed nice. The nightmare, oh, this is new too. Uh oh. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin the nightmare. is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be, be the, the end, end of, of the, the world, world. Jet. End of the world, I say. She's gonna kill me again. Again? People don't die twice. You haven't even met the princess, and I hardly think she'd be capable of killing someone as skilled and courageous as yourself. Ah. If he doesn't remember what happened, then maybe it's best to keep it that way. Shh. What if he hears us? Oh, paranoid this time. That's a very good question, little voice. What if he does hear you? Shit. <laughs> I think you'll find yourselves very hard pressed to keep any secrets from me. Not that it matters right now, because Shit. like I said, this is the first time we've met. Still, I'd rather not get off on the wrong foot. We've a world to save after all. Let's go to the cabin. A warning before you go any further. She will lie. She will cheat. I don't think lying and cheating is a thing. She was very direct with us last time. Or at least she was direct with us after we decided to lock her away. True. It doesn't matter. Don't trust anyone. What is this suit? Is that a walrus or a vampire? What vampires have you been seeing? Vampire? V vampire? What kind of knockoff vampire movies you've been watching? <laughs> vampire. <laughs> the interior of the cabin is plain. The smooth wood of the walls uh -oh. almost featureless. The only furniture of note is a lone table 
knocked on its side in the corner of the room. Oh, no. A pristine blade stands between you and the open, inviting basement doorway. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. Why is the door open? Hold on. What happened to the door? There was a door here last time. It's just an empty frame. She's already gotten out, hasn't she? And she's ready for us. She's been waiting. Can't you feel her eyes on us? I'm going to need all of you to pull yourselves together. The princess has not already gotten out. But if you keep getting stuck in your head like this, you're going to struggle to get the job done. Some sus is going on. So deep breath in, deep breath out. Your task awaits, and only you can do it. This cabin is different than I remember it being. Very different. I'm not the only one who sees her in the window, right? She knows that we're here. Wait, what? Uh-oh. Calm down. Maybe the three of you just think everything is different because you haven't been here before. Enough of this past life nonsense. You haven't died, and you certainly haven't been killed by the princess. So focus up. A lot's riding on this. Someone's watching. Approach the mirror. You walk up to the wall next to the empty basement door frame. It's a wall. There isn't much to see here. What are you talking about? This isn't a wall, it's a mirror. Or at least it'll be a mirror once we wipe off that layer of grime. You reach forward and rub your hand against the cabin wall. I hope you know how ridiculous you look right now. Did he make it go away? Clearly there was something in there worth investigating if he wants it hidden so bad. Let's go in the basement. Oh, we should have taken the knife. I don't think going down there unarmed is going to do us any favors. It'll be fine. You cross over oh, the threshold God. and onto a series of isolated steps suspended in darkness. That's creepy. More eyes, too. You never mention the eyes. The air seeping up from below reminds you of fresh lightning and static, as if you're descending into a place that isn't meant for a creature of flesh and blood. If the princess lives here, slaying her would probably be doing her a favor. Her cruel and playful voice prances up the stairs. I didn't think you'd come back. We're gonna have a lot of fun, you and I. Okay, we need a game plan. Last time we were here, just being close to her was enough to kill us. I'm sure it's gonna be great. We don't need a... Uh, I'm gonna talk to her. Didn't you hear my warning a minute ago? She can't be trusted. Talking won't do you any good. Something tells me she isn't gonna be very keen on talking anyway. You make your way to the bottom of the stairs. Is it pitch black? As you emerge, uh -oh. you find yourself between two loose rows of white wooden planks suspended in nothingness. A smattering of cobblestones, visible against the inky black of the basement, mark where the floor should be, forming vague pathways. At what seems to be the end of the room, they diverge in opposite directions, left and right. Thank she you, could be Geneva anywhere, the and there's nowhere for us to hide. We're completely exposed. Are you really not going to comment on how weird this place is? No, I'm not. Somebody needs to be the voice of reason here, and it certainly isn't you. Excuse me, I'm being incredibly reasonable. You're the one who's just matter-of-factly describing whatever the hell we're looking at like it's an ordinary basement. We're going to die down here. I don't want to die again. Please stop saying that. You're only going to make things worse. Just pick a direction and start moving. This is fine. I wouldn't give it too much thought if I were you. It doesn't really matter. Because either way you go, I'm going to find you. That's not creepy at all. That's fine. Uh, let's go the right way. You turn to the right. A faintly outlined path lies before you. 
There you are. Oh, God. I told you I was going to find oh, you. Oh, she looks so gross. As the princess approaches, your legs suddenly go numb. Your arms quickly follow. This is it, isn't it? It's almost like you want me to get you. There has to be a way out of this. Think. Think. What did you do? Pull yourself together. She isn't supposed to be like this. I wonder how many times I'll get to play with you before you break. Your vision cuts out as your blood begins to coagulate. It's as if every part of your being is coming to a lurching halt. Your heart, lungs, liver, nerves. Your lungs pull in a desperate gulp of air as your eyes shoot back open. Nerves. What are you doing? I'm working. Do you want this body to function, or do you want... And then experience stops once more as your body reapproaches death. Okay, whatever you were doing, please just start doing it again. Yeah, what are you sure about that? Are you sure that's what you want, or do you want to interrupt me some more? You have seconds left. Do you something, yes, I'm sir. sure. Heart, lungs, liver. Again, your eyes shoot open as you gasp for breath. Liver. You can't decide what you want to do, can you? Oh well, standing there gasping like a fish is more fun than dead. Even if you look ridiculous. She isn't attacking us. Why? The why doesn't matter. She's already proven her ill intent. Don't lose sight of your mission. And how are we supposed to do that? We don't have a weapon. The way out of here is nowhere to be seen. I can talk that to her. That isn't my fault. Doesn't matter whose fault it is because fighting her isn't an option, right? Lungs. Then you should get looking, shouldn't you? Hearts. Lungs. Liver. Nerves. Why won't, won't you finish me off? Because I don't want to. And even if I did, I don't have to. Look at the way you're struggling to stay alive. It's taking everything you have to keep your heart pumping right now. And I'm enjoying the show. The princess leans forward, bringing her masked lips close to your ear. If I want to see you gone, all I need to do is break your concentration. Heart, lungs, liver, nerves. Heart, lungs, liver, nerves. Heart, lungs, liver, liver nerves. nerves. Heart, lungs, she slowly liver. runs her velvet glove across the base of your neck. It feels like static. And then... Shit, shit, make her stop. Hey, snap out of it. Okay, deep breath. Deep breath, we're fine. Heart, Heart lungs, lungs, liver, nerves. nerves. Heart, your back. Lungs, liver, nerves. Heart, One moment, lungs, liver, and then you're nerves. gone. Heart, Just liver, like nerves. that. Lungs, liver, ah, nerves. Heart, and there's the fear. Nerves. She pulls away. Lungs, liver, Nerves, but that wouldn't be very nerves, fun, liver, now would it? Nerves, I've heart, already done that. Lungs, liver, nerves, heart, lungs, liver, nerves, what happened after heart, you killed me last time? I tried to leave nerves, while you suffocated, heart, lungs, but that liver, stupid cabin nerves, wouldn't heart, let me. Lungs, so liver, I started to drag nerves, your body out with me and lungs, then... Liver, nerves, heart, lungs, well, liver, you died nerves, before I could heart, get to the lungs, door. Liver, and then I was nerves, here, heart, and now you're lungs, here too. Liver, nerves, heart, lungs, I don't think I can move without you. And dead doesn't count. And as much as I love what we have going on, I have bigger plans than tormenting one poor little creature forever. I want to leave. Nerves, heart, lungs, liver, nerves, heart. If you me alive, then why did you threaten me on the stairs? Why didn't you try to be nice to me? I am being nice. You're alive, aren't you? Yes. And you died of fright as soon as you saw me last time. I didn't think keeping you alive was an option. But it looks like that's not a problem anymore. At least not for me. Lungs, liver, nerves, heart, lungs. You seem miserable. Chat, don't stop. Heart, lungs, liver, nerves. If you guys stop, we'll all die. Make sure you keep it going. Lungs, liver, nerves, 
I was sent here to stop you from destroying the world. Can't let you just leave. I know. You told me last time. Destroy is such an unenlightened way of putting it. So sudden, so violent, so little nuance. I'm not going to destroy the world, but I am going to hold it in my hands and squeeze it. I'm going to make it afraid, just like I've made you afraid. The world needs fear, doesn't it? Every terror I bring would make the good times so much better. I'm practically doing a public good. So what harm is there really in letting me out? People will die if you do to them what you've done to me. When everyone dies eventually, they're all full of wet, writhing things, and in the end, each and every one of them gets unwound. And then those things get to become a new everybody. Just to come apart all over again. All I want is to be there for it. I want to watch it happen. And maybe do a little unwinding myself. Is that really so much to ask? I mean, she's not wrong. If I let you out, what then? Do we go our separate ways? No, If you're what I need to leave this place, chances are you're pretty useful. I think I'll keep you right by my side. A little good luck charm to make sure I stay free. Don't worry. I'll make sure to take good care of you. I promise. Being around you is agony. I'm not going to stick around. Oh, we both know that you don't have a say here, so you should just look on the bright side. I'm not sure what the bright side is for you, but I'm positive you can find it if you look hard enough. Liver, nerves, heart, lungs, liver. Nerves, heart, lungs, liver, nerves, heart, lungs, liver, nerves, If you wanted to work together, couldn't you at least turn off this whole organ shutting down situation? I am what I am. It's not my fault that you can't handle being around me. Nerves, heart, lungs, liver, nerves, heart. No, you're a lunatic. You know that, right? Like I said, I am what I am. And right now, I'm in control. So, you might want to be a little nicer than me. He raises one long gloved finger, its tip hovering just over your skin, seeming to enjoy the lingering threat. But she withdraws, sparing you another momentary glimpse of death. Liver, nerves, heart, lungs, liver, nerves, heart, lungs, liver, nerves, heart, lungs, liver. We don't have to be enemies, we can work together. We can be friends. I'm glad you're seeing things my way. Nerves, heart, lungs, liver. Nerves, heart, lungs, liver, and nerves, what if I refuse to let you lungs, out? What happens liver, then? We're stuck down here together lungs, liver, until you change nerves, your mind. Heart, lungs, liver, nerves, static, and a skipped beat as she touches your shoulder and whispers in your ear. No, heart, heart lungs, lungs, liver, nerves, nerves heart, heart, lungs, liver, nerves, heart, lungs, Only liver, until nerves. your heart finally nerves, gives out. Heart, lungs, liver. And then, when you die, I'll find myself somewhere new. And before too long, you'll be there too. That's how this all works, right? This doesn't end until you let me out. And a lot can happen before then. I'm sure I can get creative. Lungs, liver, nerves, heart, lungs, liver, nerves, heart, lungs, liver, nerves. How about I just kill you instead? Oh, that's adorable. You don't have anything that can hurt me. So do your worst. Lungs, liver, nerves, heart, lungs, liver, nerves, heart, lungs. Does that mean you can die? Princess cocks her head, neck cracking uncomfortably. And you can't help but imagine a smile carve its way from ear to ear on the other side of her mask. Nerves, heart, lungs, Of course I can die. I'm dying all the time. And so are you. But we're both still here. And you can't make me go away. Nerves, heart, lungs, liver, nerves, heart, lungs, liver, nerves. Then I'll just die then. And then we'll wind up right back where we started. Round and round we'll go. I wonder what will be different next time. Maybe you'll actually be able to move a limb. Who knows? Liver, nerves. But I'm always going to win. Heart, lungs, liver, nerves, heart, lungs, liver, nerves, heart. Are you sure about that? Give it a try as a matter one eventually. Maybe you don't get to come back like I do. Is that a bet you're willing to take? Imagine climbing a mountain of lifetimes. 
And when you finally reach the summit, when you finally win, the only view you find is me. And then I push you. And you go tumbling all the way down those millions upon millions of battered and broken pieces of you that couldn't make the cut. What then? Would you have it in you to climb again? It sounds like a lot of effort for nothing. When instead we can just leave this place together. Hand in hand. Liver, nerves, heart, lungs, liver, nerves, heart, lungs, liver, nerves, heart, lungs, liver, nerves, heart, lungs, liver. I'm not doing any of this. I'm not helping you leave and I'm not gonna try and kill you, so do your worst. You poor deluded thing. Do you think a single moment of bravery changes you into something you're not? I am what I am. And you're always going to be a coward. Okay, Popeye. She raises a hand to her mask and pulls it down. Oh, God. You don't get the chance to see what lies beneath before it envelops you. Like a creeping mold, the complete reality of your existence threads its way through your mind. Birth. Death. Birth again. Decay and bloom. A million stitches from a million microscopic wounds you've inflicted on everyone you've ever met, with every muscle you've moved and every word you've ever spoken. No, 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 no. Let me out. Your existence hurts them. Let me out. A lonely soul in a room by itself, weeping. It lives for 80 years and then it's gone. And then it's there again. Let me out. No. A reprieve. A good life. Love. Children. A steady career. Recognition from your peers. Here one moment. Gone the next. The worms have found their orifices. Let me out. Diagnosis. It forgets everything it is. Anger. Rage, distance, poverty. The lonely soul is lonely again. Love turns to mockery. It dies. It is reborn. Every time she says love me out, chat, tell her Dan Nopers. Lonelier. Let me out. No, 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 no. No, no. What's, what's happening to us? Let me out. No. This is all too much. I can't keep going. You can't keep going. Well, what are you talking about? He doesn't respond. Oops, I think I broke you. I'll see you soon. You'll know what to do. Your body is dead, but you live on. Chapter three, chapter four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, infinite chapters. Uh oh. The moment of clarity. You're on a path in the shit. What? Shit. What? What the hell was that? What the hell? Who are we? What are we doing? I think we broke the timeline. There was a princess, I think. It's all so fuzzy. It hurts when I try to remember. I think we were trying to save the world. Maybe. You didn't know about the princess. At least, not until I... You've already been here, haven't you? I guess. It, it feels so long ago, almost like we've never left. We have to let her out. No, that's the opposite of what you're here to do. You have to slay her. Slay? We decided not to do that, didn't we? Yeah, we're supposed to let her out. It's really the only way this works out for us. If you think about it, she's the one with power here. Nobody else can do much of anything. No, we were supposed to keep her trapped there forever. I think. We're supposed to be unfeeling. How many times do I have to tell you to snuff out your heart? We can't be unfeeling. Not when there's so much fear everywhere. There's nothing for us to There's do. There's so we many voices in our head everything. now. This is like being in a big we viewer account her. chat. There's like so voices we have everywhere. To set her free. Can we love something that hates us? Can we love something that hurts us? 
to be given an ounce of kindness from something so cruel would be more pure than any other love. Why are there so many of us? There aren't supposed to be so many of us. This is bad. You need to get a grip. What did you let happen? How many times have you been here? I think they're all wrong. Of course we're wrong. She's the only thing that's right. Yes, obviously they're all wrong. What are you going to do about it? Getting back to his earlier question, how many times have you all been here? Many, 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 many times. It feels like we've been here forever. But it also feels like we've barely been here at all. It doesn't matter. Yes, we just have to do what she says and then everything will be fine. It won't. It will be for us. She said so. You're part of everything. If things aren't fine for everything, they won't be fine for you. There's no difference between fine and not fine. It just goes on and on. But that doesn't make sense. I don't remember being here twice before this. And some of you don't seem to remember being here at all. What? Was I here before the other times? Did someone else make these decisions? What does here even mean, if you really think about it? Shut up. You were here. Every single time. You did your best, really. There's just a pecking order. And we're back. Is this game really good? Oh, it's very good. It's mostly just dialogue, but it's really well written and very mind messy. It's very, very cool so far. Are you guys enjoying it so far? And our cruel and beautiful goddess sits atop it, right where she's always belonged. You're lucky. What I would give to be able to forget. I've tried to keep them numb, but they're all too soft. A shame, really. If I don't remember what I did, then it, it couldn't have been me that did it. Don't think about that too hard. All it will do is weaken your resolve and make it that much harder for you to slay her. Maybe you're shattered in your own way. Oh, Stanley Parable? Are you your memories? It definitely has some Stanley Parable in it. The present moment? Ugh, here you go philosophizing again. It never goes anywhere. Yes, this is far from the first time you've asked us about consciousness. Who am I? What am I? What is I? Who even cares? They're good questions. Great questions, even. But they don't have any answers. And they all just end in quivering torment. It doesn't matter what we do, because we always find her. And if we don't find her, she always finds us. And then she smashes us into smaller pieces. If you all just stopped feeling, we could have been done with this ages ago. Your thoughts are far too scattered to rein back in. Your only option is to silence them. What if we don't go to the cabin? We've tried that. It doesn't work. Our hearts always brought us back to her. The deck is stacked. So many paths, and they're all circles. Can you make sense of them? There's nothing worth making sense of. They're clearly all traumatized. And yet, you aren't. We break apart, and you stay the same. Yeah, what's your secret? Why can you break the rules when we can't? I feel so disjointed. I don't know if I can pull this off. I don't care how you feel. You have to slay her. You have to pull yourself together. You have to snap out of it. You're lucky you haven't been stuck here like the rest of them. There's no other way to keep going. You either need to forget or you need to stop feeling much of anything. 
They can't do either. He's not wrong. He's the only smart one left, if you ask me. He's worse than her. Proceed to the cabin. You slowly make your way through the umbral forest, bumping against unseen trees as you grasp through the darkness for a way forward. But eventually, you do make it to the cabin, or rather, you make it to the place a cabin should have been. Instead, all you find is an empty hill. No, no, this isn't right. There's a cabin there. There's always supposed to be a cabin there. Why don't I ask him about the mirror? He always says he never sees it. Oh, he sees it. He always lies. And he always makes it gone. It's exhausting. We must be such a mess, but we never get the chance to fix ourselves. That thing is mocking us. Stay focused. You still have a job to do, and it's best not to be distracted by fraying thoughts. There is no mirror. You know that as well as I do. She's still here, buried deep inside the earth. Just walk up the hill. You always give too much space to the others. It's why you always lose. Approach them? And what's wrong with giving them space? What if it helps them? What if they need to be heard? They've been heard too much. It's why they are the way they are. Exactly. They are delusions, and all that catering to them will do is drag you down to their level. You have to keep moving. Or you could just give up. Approach the mirror. You walk up the hill, hesitating just beyond the bounds of the cabin. The cabin that isn't there. You've got to clean the mirror, haven't you? You've got to see what's in it. Smash it to pieces. She's on the other side. And we have to let her out. It's the only way we can be free. It's the only way we can have our thoughts back. Just go around it. Just do something. It doesn't matter what. Exactly. I'm sure that whatever you settle on, it'll be the best possible decision you could have made. Of course. Proceed. Proceed? Proceed to where? I'm afraid you're going to have to be a little more specific. That's a new one. Do you think it'll work? Of course it'll work. He always makes the best decisions. It's why he gets to make them. And it already has worked. Right. It's gone, don't you see? We're one step closer to her. The interior of the cabin is much the same as the exterior of the cabin. A dull, fuzzy, dreamlike nothing. It's empty and isolating, but there's just enough vague shape and unknown texture to suggest the structure therein. Wrong and unsettling as it may be. The only object of note is a pristine blade buried in the dirt floor, a hint of its shining edge teasing through the sediment. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you're going to do this right. Take it. It's the only way forward. You have to take the blade or take the blade. You have to take the blade. You reach down to take the blade. Uh oh As you do, the ground beneath it shifts, the weapon sinking deep into the earth. What you the lean hell? You the hole and gaze into the abyss. Is so very deep. Deep in the bowels of the earth, you see something staring back at you. It fills oh, you with hi. dread. It's her. She's watching us. She looks she great. Never stops watching us. You really are a coward. With every word she speaks, uh -oh. the princess in the pit blinks closer. I was joking when I said that way back when. You know that, right? Closer. 
I was having some fun, and I guess I wanted to see if I could knock you. And closer. Watching over me forever? That was so brave. And closer. But forever is so, so long. And time erodes everything. Except for me. I've already taken your will, and you're not getting it back. I never liked Will. And let me out. It'll be so much fun. You and me, together, exploring the world and spreading fear wherever we go. Well, mostly just me. But you'll get to be there too. A trinket that gets to stay with me all the time. Right by my side. A witness. I can even make you a little cage if you want. Gilded and everything. Now don't pause. Don't try to resist. I've already molded you into what I need. And you lost your power so long ago. Don't bother working yourself into a frenzy to get it back. Do something. Do anything that isn't taking her hand. Uh... What are we supposed to do? She took our weapon. This really was a lost cause, wasn't it? You sealed our fate when you Hello, refused Peter. to kill her. I don't... Kill or be killed. Yes, I suppose you're right. Oh well. There's no paralysis anymore. Is it because we've already given her what she wants? What if I just took a dump in the hole? I can't choose anything except take her hand, set her free. You extend your hand to hers. For all her past cruelties, the moment feels gentle. Tender, even. I can't believe you just made me say that. I hate you. <sighs> the motion is difficult at first, as if something still resists your efforts. But then that resistance gives way, and it's over. And that's the end. I wonder what we're going to do next. Why do you have three arms? I didn't think I'd be so... tired. Princess exhausted, slumps. Why is it so cold? You do not get the chance to respond, nor will you ever. It's time to leave. Memory returns. She's gone. Yeah. I can finally think again. Almost. That mirror's back. What does that mean for us? I'm sure it'll be whisked away, just like her. Maybe it will be gone. Things are different now, aren't they? Doesn't seem like there's much else to do here. Finally, we can smash it. Oh, you stop with the smashing. What do we say, boys? One last vain attempt to look at ourselves. Yeah. I think I'd like that. Seems we've got a majority. All that's left is to give it a look. Well, let's try to look in the mirror again. Seems to me hidden mysteries remain unsolved. Someone tells me that this is the end of the line. But... I don't feel bad about it. I'm ready. It feels... Okay. The fear's... Oh, I'm done fighting. My heart feels... Quiet. The game was always going to end. I'll be free of all of you. I'm ready for the truth. I'm ready to sleep. I'm just ready to be anywhere that isn't here. Boys, it's been an honor. Gaze at my reflection. Silent as you reach for it. They're gone once again. Mirror always makes them leave, but you need to see what's in it. You unraveled. You've unraveled. Find yourself long quiet once again. You're at the cabin. Approach her. 
There's a world beyond the endless walls of the long quiet. We're supposed to be there. Do you know what we'll find out there? Is that a rhetorical question? Do you know? Do you want me to tell me? Rhetorical. I am not rhetorical. I have only known these spaces. And I have known flickers of the lives you've brought me. Short and violent and full of passion. But all of those flickers end where the long quiet begins. I'm asking you because I cannot know your mind. Do you know what we'll find out there? There's Kappa, Mingli, TwitchCon Hype, Pog, and there are people, I think. At least there are supposed to be people. There is a warmth and sadness in me at the thought of people. Fresh tears on a winter's day. They are not like us. They do not last. Do you think anything is real out there? Do you think we're real? We are real. Nothing is an idea that dwells in the absence of something. But nothing cannot exist on its own. And because of that, nothing can't exist. Do you have thoughts on this vessel? This one is filled with sadness. A doll, abandoned to the company of her darkest impulses. She desires only companionship, but the only thing she knows is how to hurt. She will make for a tender heart. Do not mourn her. She has finally found her way home. Otherwise, we haven't saved ever. Do you know what's going to happen when you awaken? If I did. I would already be awake. Uh, when you send me back, I'm not alone. There are voices that speak to me. Some of them are me, but one of them is something else. Call him the narrator. And he wants me to kill you. Do you have a narrator? Have the vessels have one? No. Their thoughts are quiet. Do you think your narrator lives in the spaces beyond? He does. I don't know why, but I know this for a fact. I am on the cusp of my awakening. Perhaps you are on the cusp of yours. How many more vessels do I need to bring you? One. Whatever you bring me next will be enough. And then gravity will pull the others back to me. I will be singular. A final multitude. If this is the last time, is there anything you would like me to bring you? These gifts are a conversation. And each one shows me the contours of your heart. The only thing I want to see is what you choose for me when the thread is fully drawn. This is the last stage for your completion, then I'm not going... I'm ready to go back. The next time I see you, each of us will finally know what we are. I will be here, waiting for you. Jeez, every time. Uh, let's go to the cabin. Uh, we'll take the blade. Basement. You know the stairs. Good. You're still listening to reason. I'm just gonna stab her without talking to her. See what happens. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far. Still your nerves and step forward. You step forward, your grip on the blade tightening as you steal your resolve. Oh? No talking then? Fine. What even makes you think you can kill me? I'm probably chained up in this basement for a reason, right? 
And if that knife is the only weapon you have, you'll have to get close enough to use it. So, you should just drop it. Best not to risk finding out what I can do. She's unarmed. If you hesitate now, it'll be too late. End this. Stab her! You lunge forward without a moment's hesitation. You feel flesh easily <laughs> give way and look down to see your blade already sinking deep into her heart. <laughs> I use my knife. <laughs> oh. This is it, isn't it? <laughs> I'm almost embarrassed. I should have seen that coming. But I have to wonder... Do you actually believe this was enough to kill me? It's like she's convinced she can't die. Yes, even as she lays there dying, she entirely believes herself to be alive and well. But it's over, isn't it? She stopped breathing moments ago, that arrogant look still plastered on her face. But is it over? Really over? Of course it is. She's dead. Yes, exactly. It's over. Of course she's dead. With your work done, you make your way back up the stairs, closing the door to the basement behind you. Why do I feel like we've done something terrible? Uh-oh. You did kill someone. Greater good or not, something would be very wrong with you if you didn't feel at least a little bad. But it was for the greater good. One of these days that will sink in and help ease your guilty conscience. But that day isn't today. Let's just get out of here. I will leave. You open the cabin door, ready to return to a world saved from certain doom. Only a world saved from certain doom isn't uh -oh. what you find. Instead, what you find is nothing at all. Where a lush forest stood mere minutes ago, the only thing in front of you now is the vast emptiness of some oh, place no, far away. Oh no, I got away. baited. What happened? Everyone is fine. It's just that you and the cabin are now far away from them. Don't worry. You'll be safe here. This is good. Everyone is happy. You'll be happy. Uh, I was hope I, I, I was kind of hoping I'd get a better ending for saving the world. This isn't an ending. In fact, now that the princess has been slain, endings are a thing of the past. No. This is the beginning of eternity. What? Your reward. This is what's best for everyone. Trust I me. I have to stay here for eternity? This Time cabin? passes. You can't be sure if it's days or months or years or even decades. It's all a wonderful, boring blur. You've never been happier. What? Psst. Hey. We're not just going to stay here forever, right? No. Didn't you hear the narrator? I'm happy. We're happy. Because if, if we stay clueless, then we're just happy forever. Ignorance is bliss. Are we really happy? Or is he just telling us that we are? No, we're happy. I'm sure of it. Really? Well, if you ever change your mind, just let me know, I guess. See, chat's More cool. happy too. time happy. passes, though the word begins to lose its meaning. Time, that is. Not happy. Happy still has plenty of meaning. Please, shake yourself out of it. We have to get out of here. The little voices, please, fall on deaf ears. Eventually, you pass into a blissful state of pure existence. Though words like eventually and pass ceased to have any meaning to you long before that shift, you simply exist. Happy. Forever. Good ending, you did it! You saved everyone! You have already committed to my completion. You cannot go further astray. <laughs> Ha 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 ha.
That was such a good ending. Okay, maybe I'm not happy. I'm not. I'm not saying because that you're the last person I talked to. Good, because I have an idea to get us out of here. Though you're probably not going to like it. Oh no. The blade. We can use the blade to get out of this. I can hear everything you say, little voice. There's only one thing it would want you to use that blade on, and I'm afraid that thing is you, dear hero. He's right. It's the only way out. No. Do you hear that? It wants to take this happiness away from you. It wants this wonderful place to end. Do you not? There's more for us to do, and the only way for us to do it is to take that blade and use it. But it's covered in nasty... Don't you dare. ...bloody guts. Wouldn't using this blade, you would know, kill us? Wouldn't we be dead? How astute. You are absolutely correct. Using the blade to kill yourself would kill you, and you what? shouldn't do it. No, that's not how that works. In a sense, we die, but looking at things from another angle, are we even really alive anymore? This place, it's nothing. It's absolutely nothing. It's just the same thing, constantly, forever. I know this is out there, but trust me, I know using the blade will work. That little voice didn't want you to slay the princess. It didn't want you to be happy. This cabin is a live service game. It just got abandoned right away because they didn't um, finish it and no one wanted to play it. But hey, one day we'll get a bunch of content. You better be right about this. I'll be pretty upset if we die, die here. If we die, die, you can yell at me all you want. I made this happy little place for you. Is this not a good enough reward for saving the world? An eternity of bliss? You, you ingrate. Fine, whatever. For the first time since time stopped meaning anything, you throw open the door to the basement and walk down the stairs. You see this wall right here, chat? His name is the Russ. Princess's body is dust and wall bones, Russ. Though the blade you used to slay her is still as pristine as the day you first held it. You pick up the blade, you stab yourself, and you die. The end. Nice knowing you. Yay! The Spectre, uh oh. So she's gonna start You're dead. You're on a path in the woods. And at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a, is a princess. princess. Uh oh. You're here to slay her. Let's go to the cabin. A warning. Before she will lie, she will cheat, she won't be a problem. Let's go to the cabin. The interior of the cabin is cold. A soft odor of dirt permeating the air. Uh -oh. Cobwebs flutter in the corners. You can hear wind whistling outside, banging the shutters against the windows. She's gonna be a ghost. The only furniture of note is an elegant antique table with a pristine blade perched on the edge. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. It feels like no one's been here for a long, long time. Like I've been saying, she's dead. We killed her already. I will... Take the blade. You take the blade from the table. It will be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. Basement. The door to the basement groans open, revealing an old banister and a creaky wooden stairwell. Everything is coated in a thick layer of dust, and you can feel it settle into your lungs as you breathe in the stale air. The very building itself feels dead. If the princess lives here, slaying her would probably be doing her a favor. The room below is silent. It's amazing how many variations of this they have done. Nobody's here, naturally. As much as I appreciate the optimism, you shouldn't be so sure. I guess we'll just have to go down and see. 
She's already dead. I wonder what this one's gonna be like. As you descend oh. the final step, the form of the princess comes into view. A skeletal body lying in a heap on the floor, its wrist still bound to the wall by a thick chain. Okay. She's definitely dead. It's just like I told you. Before you have a chance to finish your thought, the top of a head appears from underneath the floor. Two deep-set eyes stare up at you, followed by a mischievous skeletal grin. Uh -oh. Finally, the rest of the body <laughs> floats up to join the head. Wait, this isn't right. What's a going scary on? Scary ghost! A g g g ghost! Oh. Wow. How absolutely terrifying. What's a ghost supposed to do to us? Oh, it's you. Hiya, Keller. I was hoping to see you again. I have some issues with how our last meeting went. The princess drifts across the room into your orbit, gently running her fingers across your shoulders and down your neck as she circles you. I. Her touch is cold and ethereal, formless yet real enough that her icy fingertips send shivers dancing across your skin. So she has a body, and she's right there. That means we could kill her again, if we wanted to. Do ghosts have bodies, though? Slay the princess! At a moment's hesitation, you lash out with your blade. <laughs> it's like you're slashing at air. No matter how many times uh -oh. you stab at her, no matter how many angles you strike from, all you manage to do is interrupt her form, the skin oh, of your hand no. prickling with cold as it passes through, unable to find anything solid. She's a cloud. Hmm. You're adorable when you're confused. But I didn't say you could touch me. Uh-oh. Why are you even here? Just making sure you Toby, finish the thank job you for the sub! Woo! What? If I knew I'd have to talk to you again, I wouldn't have to I wouldn't have to slay I wouldn't have slain you. And if I knew you were going to murder me without even knowing who I was, I wouldn't have given you the chance. We all make mistakes. Oh god. I die too and I'm not floating around like you are. What happened? Why am I different? Why are you different? You don't look dead, killer. The princess grabs your wrist, a sudden shock of cold flowing all the way up your arm, her eyes still fixed on yours as you try to squirm out of her grip. And you don't feel dead either. She lets go and pulls away. Your fingertips tingle painfully as the chill subsides. I'm less interested in why you are, or how you are, and a lot more interested in what you are. I've tried to leave on my own. Before you came back to me, I explored every inch of this place, even the spaces between the walls. But I never found a way out. I always wound up right back here. Anifis 13, another sub! Woo! First time sub. Thank you very much. I just want to go home. I'm so cold and alone here. But you can come and go as you please, can't you? So, let me hit your ride. After all, you owe me. Oh god. Absolutely not. Don't do that ever again. Is she asking if she can possess us? She is. But I hope I don't need to explain why you can't let that happen. It would be catastrophic if she managed to escape this place. And if you let her in, there is very little anyone could do to stop her. Um, technically she possessed us once before, so she's trying to repossess us. Would she be able to see us if we went along with it? Now isn't that an interesting thought? We could finally bring her face to face with him. 
I wonder what she would have to say to the one who wants her dead so, so badly. <sighs> you won't like how things play out if you go down this path. What if I say no? Then I won't hit your rod. You won't hitch a ride if I say no, and or you can't hitch a ride. I'm sure you'd like to know. It's a shame I won't tell you. That's rude. But it'll be easier for both of us if you just let me in. And doesn't it sound nice? Maybe for her, but it's crowded enough in here as is. You won't have to feel guilty anymore. If you even do feel guilt. I felt it guilt. It would be the best way to trap her for good. Doesn't seem like it would be very easy to end the world from inside someone else's body. Chat, when I was a kid, I took candy out of the candy bin at the store and didn't pay for it. It was just, they had big, big buckets of candy just sitting there. And I just took one and I didn't know that they had to pay for them. I thought they were just free candy, like, like Halloween. It was just there, the big, the big vats. You, they'd have to like scoop. You would scoop up candy and put it in a bag. But I was just like, oh, nom 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 nom. I felt really guilty when I did that last week. That is a very dangerous train of thought. This would be just temporary, right? You'd have, you'll leave the cabin. Uh, you'll leave once you're out of the cabin. If I'm able to. But for all we know, that's not how it works. Maybe I'll wind up stuck with you for a long, 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 long time. Do you hear the way she said that? She knows more than she's letting on. Don't let her fool you into doing something you'll regret. I also ripped a tag off a pillow. If I let you in, do I get to, uh, do I get still to be into control? Sure. Why not? That doesn't sound very reassuring. I can't believe you're even entertaining her right now. I mean, just look at her. Do you think she has good intentions for her murderer's body? Of course she doesn't. Before I agree anything, we need to talk about what happens after you leave this place. I was told you didn't the world. And what? You just, just believed that? You, you killed me without giving it any thought? That's cold. That's rich coming from her. Every time she touches us, it's like we freeze over. She's right. Cold crap's work with the here nor sub, there. thank you! What's done is done. What we do from this point forward is all that matters. Let's try not to let emotion get the better of us. Obviously, it's wrong of me to believe that. How could you have been in the world if all it took to kill you was a knife to the heart? So there really was a last time, and you really did manage to slay her. Part of it was taken. I would have liked to think I well. was the first, but there's no point living in denial. The first. It doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is this. Don't underestimate your own capabilities. If you truly managed to slay her last time. That doesn't mean she wasn't a threat. It means you did something heroic. Threats come in all shapes and sizes. A misspoken word could bring about the end of everything just as much as a blade or even the mere existence of an idea. You were chosen for this job for a reason. That's right, Killer. I'm not a threat to anyone. And even if I was, I'm hardly a threat anymore. What did you say? Well, you are a ghost. What are you going to do if I help you get out of here? I don't know. Maybe I'll, Maybe just, I'll just fade away. away. Finally, able, able to rest once I'm free from my unfinished business. Maybe I'll find someone to haunt. Maybe I'll haunt you. Hey. It's a tough question, asking someone what she's going to do with her life. The princess leans in close and pauses, the frigid air between you stale and unmoving. Especially when someone is dead. She pulls back with a playful <laughs> giggle. 
I don't think most living people could answer that, either. Does anyone actually know who they are or what they want? True. Well, were you going to end the world? I don't know. I just wanted to leave. I still just want to leave. You answer my question. Do you want to end the world? The only thing I've ever wanted was to leave this place. It's still the only thing I want. Um... You still didn't answer my question. Even uh, if you don't want to end it, does letting you out of here mean the world is going to end? It does. We're not asking you. We've heard your whole speech already. I really, really don't, don't know. know. I'm not lying to you. I promise. The world doesn't matter. All I like remember is that I'm supposed to be there. There? Not here? I'm just supposed to be a part of it. It's its home, I think. But what does it mean for anything to end? I ended, but I also didn't. And you ended too. But here you are. And you don't, and you don't even look any different. I'm not so sure endings are real. Matt Bag, thank you so much for the sub! Woo! Another one. Another first timer. So if I get this straight, if I let you inside me, you'll let me out. God, that sounds familiar. I killed you. What are you doing not being dead? I don't feel very bad. But I guess I'm not. Not dead. So you must have only mostly killed me. Or maybe death is only mostly real. But it's also mostly not real. I'm not sure. I'm just the one these things have happened to. Not the one with all the answers. Or any of the answers. But we're not a ghost. Unless we are. Hand hand ban with Death, that reset. At least as a form of permanence is just a concept. And clearly it's not a very useful one anymore. Maybe we should throw it out entirely. See, this is why I didn't want you to talk to her. Death is not just a concept, it is an extremely real phenomenon. Don't let her distort your reality. Cold hard facts exist. The truth exists. It has to. Your body's right there, though. Your dead body. The princess glances back at the bones lying on the floor. It's just a body. Do you believe these bones? Or do you believe me? Because those bones aren't talking to you. She's seeing things pragmatically. We should do the same. Reality is what's in front of us, not our preconceptions of what it should be. There doesn't need to be a static truth. There doesn't need to be objectivity. Do you know why you came back? How should I know? Why does anyone come back? Maybe I have unfinished business with you. Or maybe you have unfinished business with me. All I know is there's a hole in my chest. And not the big obvious one that you put there. There's something older and deeper. A nagging reminder that I'm not where I'm supposed to be. Chat, a completely unrelated question. Can you date a ghost? To just, I just want, is that okay? Can you do that? Stop playing the victim, you threatened me last time. Well, yeah. You probably brought a knife with you. Was I supposed to just welcome you with open arms when you obviously had stabbing on the line? Yes. That knife could have been for anything. It could have, but it wasn't. You can't blame me for threatening a would-be knife-wielding murderer. Especially when that would-be knife-wielding murderer became an actual knife-wielding murderer. <laughs> That's fair. That is very fair. You're dead, or at least mostly dead. What can you even do to hurt me? A boring question with an easy answer. Nothing. She's a ghost. Ghosts can't hurt us. That's for me to know, and for you to wonder about. 
Maybe, maybe, maybe I, can't I can't do anything to you. See? Or maybe, maybe I can, I can rip, rip your heart out. out. What? Who's to say? Really? really? I don't like the uncertainty here. I don't know what to do or who to trust. Don't like that. I will slay the princess harder. You swing at the princess once more, and once more your blade cuts through nothing as she disappears. <laughs> her voice chides from elsewhere in the room. You whirl around, finding her hovering between you and the basement stairs, looking you over with grim disappointment. She draws in close. I was willing to let bygones be bygones, however. I was willing to ignore everything you did to me so we could get out of here, together. All I ever wanted was to leave this place. All I ever wanted was to find a way back home. Wherever home is. Her eyes turn from wells of sorrow to pits of wrath as she stares into you. How does violence uh. is the language you speak? Please. She forces her hand into your chest, and then... Yes? Nothing happens. Are you sure about that? So something should have happened. And yet it didn't. We're fine. Did you miss? No. <laughs> you can't be sure if you first hear or feel what happens next, but it is over before you can fully conceptualize what it is. A horrific splintering, the squelching of organs, the rending of tissue, an icy, numbing pain. I'm done asking. The next time I see you, I'm taking everything I owed. Starting with your body. If you won't choose to give me my freedom, I'll just have to make you give it to me. She's real now. If she's making us dead, we should return the favor. Stab her! You swing your blade towards her briefly corporeal throat. It connects. A gash widens across her neck, glowing ectoplasm leaking from the wound. But it's too little. Uh-oh. In her hand, you oh, realize no. she clutches your still-beating heart. It thumps, unsettling. Do I need that to live? Did we get her? Even if we didn't. So she looks like Dan Love right now. See you soon, killer. I'm afraid you'll never know. Uh-oh. As she crushes your precious organ in her hand, everything goes dark, and you die. Damn it. The Wraith. You're on a path in the wood, and oh. here we go again. Off to slay her. Again. again. The deck's stacked, isn't it? We kill her, we start again. She kills us as a goddamn ghost. We start again. I'm starting to think we're being run in circles just for the sake of it. There's so many branches to this game. Let's not give in to all that misery just it's yet. It's crazy. There's got to be a way out of this. There's got to be a right answer. Yeah. And what if there isn't? Aren't you listening to me? What if all of this was rigged from the start? That's ridiculous. There'd be no point in all this if it was just some kind of cosmic busy work. I think that's exactly what it is. The powers that be seeing how many ways they can screw with us. Could be it's all some kind of sick joke to them. Wouldn't that get, I don't know, boring? Not if they're creative with it. Okay, so you've already been here. Twice even. Great. Then let me poke a few holes in your depressing little theory. Nobody here is screwing with you, and I can't imagine any scenario where you would have started over after slaying the princess. That's bullshit, and you well, know it. we didn't have to start over. We killed ourselves. And why, pray tell, did you do that? Because you decided to foist an infinite tedium on us. That doesn't sound like me. 
If I'd had everything my way, you would have effortlessly slain the princess, saved the world, and been given your happy ending. The ending was the tedium. You locked us in a cabin and sent that cabin to an endless void, and then you told us we were happy. Well, were you happy? Of course we weren't happy. That's why we killed ourselves. It was awful. It was boring. It was bullshit. So you killed yourself? Yes, and then she killed us. Even though she was already dead. This is all fake. <sighs> okay, let's try to get back on track. You're real. The princess is real. The world is real. The people in the world are real. And the danger she poses to all of them is also, quite unfortunately, real. Whatever you did the first time, it sounds like it almost worked. So how about you give it one last try? Because killing yourself seems to undo all the good you almost managed to accomplish. Why should we help you? So you can just lock us away forever again? No, I don't think so. Tell you what, I won't do that. I promise. Oh yeah, sure, that changes everything. I mean, he did promise. And you believed him? <laughs> All this standing around and talking is boring. Let's at least do something. Maybe we'll kill her again. Maybe we won't. Maybe we'll even free her. Now, wouldn't that be something? We won't. It would. I guess we'll just have to see what happens. <sighs> Thankfully, you all aren't the ones actually making the decisions, are you? You know what you have to do. You have to slay her. You have to save the world. Nothing matters more than this. Don't play by his rules. Everything here is rigged. Everything is changing to whatever's convenient for him. Even the woods are changing. Woods look That's creepy. all the more reason to take this seriously. If the path isn't the same, it means that her influence is spreading. And the world has already started to end. Her influence? Yeah, what influence? I really should have said that. It'll make your task more difficult. But now it's out, you could always take that information as a sign of goodwill between us and do your job, all right? I don't believe you. Let's go to the cabin. We continue down the path towards the cabin. It isn't long before you're steps away from your destination. I don't think you need any words of warning. I think you know what's in there, and despite your protestations, I think you know what you need to do. The more he talks, the more I'm interested in setting her free. Whatever. You don't want to listen to me? Do it then. Let her out. See what I care. It sounds like somebody's about to crack. Are you trying to use reverse psychology me, or are you just giving up? There's obviously no point in trying to reason with you right now, especially with all these clowns offering up their useless advice. Honestly, it seems like the more I try and talk sense into you, the more single-minded they get about letting her out. So yes, I'm done trying to argue. Would you look at that? We won. Take it however you will. Hmm. I missed an important question. Her influence? I really should have said. Are you the same narrow event in the other loops? You were quick to accept that before we've been here that we've been here before. If I had to make a wager, I'd say yes and no. That's a hedge, not a wager. I haven't met you, but you've clearly met me. 
It sounds to me like you're hopping between parallel realities, in which case the me you just met here is the same collection of experiences as the me you met at all of those other beginnings, but their continuity breaks the moment you say or do anything, in effect making them all separate. So yes, I'm the same me, but ever since the moment we started what? talking, I'm different. I'm not sure how we're supposed to kill him ourselves. But he's asking for it. Maybe there's some way she can take care of him for us. They've clearly all been through some harrowing experiences. Don't let their baggage influence your decisions. You have the ability to see things clearly. I suggest you use it. We've killed her and been killed by her, and other things have gone well for us. If we're going to fall through this loop forever, eventually we're going to have to let her out. We might as well do it now. You're making a dizzying amount of assumptions. Your perceived reality looping twice before does not mean it will continue to do so forever. Those little voices have already drawn attention to the fact that even the path is different. The world itself is at a tipping point. Know that there is always a choice. Even if you were stuck in an infinite loop, there's no reason to assume that the mere nature of the infinite would force you to make any specific choice. You do have free will, as much as things would be easier if you didn't, and you can just keep making the correct choice forever, never deviating. How convenient, everything always comes back to what you want us to do. I'm sick of him. Makes me want to end the world out of spite. <laughs> Same. On second thought, Let's not kill him. Let's throw him someplace that never ends. I'd like to see what that does to him. What happens if we don't go to the cabin? That's another option. Then she finds a way out on her own. Ugh, of course she does. So, standing around out here is the same as us letting her out. Only we don't have to see her. That's got to be better, right? No, it's strictly worse. But she can't kill us out here. Why would staying out of killing distance be worse if she's getting out regardless? Because it's cowardly, for starters. And because the unknown is always worse than the known. But really, all you're doing right now is weighing two considerably bad options. The only solution worth considering is slaying her, and whatever delusion is holding you back from doing that is just that. A delusion. If you already managed to end her in some other world, the only reason you'd be here is that you somehow managed to do it wrong. How are we supposed to decide on anything if you just keep coming up with new rules? Since when is there a wrong way to slay her? Exactly. Go to the cabin. We continue down the path towards the cabin. And then we did this part already. There's oh. The interior oh. of the cabin is long and dark. A single narrow hallway stretching far into the distance. This is different. Curtains billow out from tall windows on either side, obscuring the path forward, fluttering helplessly as opposing gusts of wind rush into the building. Clashing and joining and driving everything forward. Spray being even creepier of now. Notice. Hmm. That's strange. What's strange? Is it Why? the mirror? The mirror? No, there isn't a mirror. What's strange is that there isn't much of anything in here at all, aside from the curtains. There's supposed to be a pristine blade. Why does he never acknowledge Why the mirror? Why isn't there a pristine blade? It's so weird. Great. Something else has been taken away from us. I suppose the only way to go is forward. So forward we will go. Blade or not, it doesn't really matter, does it? Let's pretend there's a mirror at the end of this hallway and that right now we can't, we can't see behind it. What's there? What's behind it? If you're asking what's at the end of the hallway, it's the way to the basement. The way to the basement? Don't you mean door? No, I didn't say door. Because there isn't a door, it's just an opening. 
What are the odds she's waiting for us right behind here? If I were running a bullshit factory, it's what I'd do. Let me assure you that there's nothing there. Nothing is going to jump out at you. And certainly not the princess. The princess is in the basement. He can't see the mirror. The knife is gone, defying his expectations. Who the hell is calling the shots here? It's all very sus. Nobody is calling the shots. That's how reality works. Approach the mirror. You slowly make your way towards the gaping moor that awaits you. Your fraying nerves buzz with trepidation, the chill wind raising your hackles as it gently pushes you forward towards the darkness at the end of the hallway. You can't shake the feeling that you're being watched. We've always been watched. You're watching us right now. Sometimes the feeling is just stronger than others. I feel like you're trying to put us on edge. We don't need all this anticipation. We just need this to be over. You stop as you reach the end of the hallway, I presume in front of whatever mirror isn't actually there. Reach the end of the hallway, I'll wipe the mirror Here clean. we go! You reach your arm forward into the pitch black of the opening. Nothing. <laughs> It's like this place read our mind just to mess with us. What you're looking at, killer? Staring into the void? Uh -oh. Thinking about what it'd be like to die again? I know exactly how you feel. Shit. Where is she? Uh oh. You feel something long and frigid coil around your ankle. Your heart skips a beat, standing in muted shock for one long, frozen moment. And then it, she, the princess, constricts. Your bones snap. Icy pain radiates up from the break, a deep cold flooding your veins as your legs, numb with the shock of it, collapse, and you collapse with them. You're met with the terrifying visage of the princess. Her hand grips your leg in a steel vice, her oh, groin God. carved jagged from ear to ear, crowded with far too many long and crooked teeth. Do you know how I feel? I gave you a path to forgiveness. I gave you a chance to make things right. I thought maybe you'd seen what you've done and feel remorseful. Maybe try to make it up to me. But no, you'd rather use that knife to keep making the same mistake over and over and over. Let me stab her again, please. Even after I ripped your heart out, you still cut me. And for what? I didn't go anywhere. You didn't banish me. I'm right back here with you. A little better, a little worse. Well, maybe a lot worse. A lot uglier, yes. So, here's how this is going to go. I'm going to take your body, and I'm going to walk it out of here. And you? You get to watch me do it. Completely helpless. Just like you left me. I say we let her do it. It's something different. If you break my legs, I'm gonna walk Do out of here. Do you even have a choice? You always have a choice. Maybe before, but not now. There isn't a blade this time. Exactly. What choice is there if there isn't a blade? Well, unless you have any specific ideas, I think my vote's the only one that counts. I thought you could possess me of, uh, on your own. I thought I needed to agree to it. Now is then. This is now. Look, we're even now. I killed you and then you killed me. Water on the bridge, right? And you think that's even? How adorable. But I think you forgot about the part where you tried killing me again. Well... If I were you, I would just want to get it over with. You lost your chance to call the shots. There's no going back to fix it now. You can either look on in horror or celebrate my freedom. But either way, you're about to become a passenger. Enough talking. We'll have plenty of time for chit-chat once this place is far behind us. You 
remain pinned yeah. to the floor of the long hallway as the rest of the princess's body emerges. Her proportions all wrong, limbs bent and curling, moving in ways that defy your understanding. I still would, her though. Her torso stretches until her face is practically touching yours, her neck cracking audibly as she twists Cal to the from a so. fresh angle. Are you sure you can't do anything to help us? Can't you, like, manifest a rock right on top of her head? And crush you along with her? Not that I even can manifest a rock. Besides, I thought you all wanted to free the princess. Not like this. You don't even have a weapon, so I'm afraid you're out of luck, which unfortunately means that I and the rest of the world are out of luck too. And whose fault is it there isn't a weapon here? Yours, I assume. There's supposed to be a pristine blade. Whatever you did in those previous lives of yours, you really messed up. Are you seriously trying to blame this on us? Yeah, it's your fault. Your vision fades as she tears open the membrane of your soul. Is that painful? You're awake. Eyes once again fixed on the long hallway, your vision swimming as the princess's command reverberates inside your skull. Her voice is all-encompassing. You feel... wrong. So cramped in here. Like there's some sort of growth trying to push us all out. I know. You rise to your feet, though the pain in your ankle is blinding. Your body slumps against the wall, desperately leaning into it for support. There's another option, you know. Oh, Don't help either of them. Flip the table. Flip the table. That gap where the mirror was. I don't think it goes anywhere. Let's throw ourselves into the abyss. Now. Your body, still slumped against the wall, oh, trapped between awful. the princess's overwhelming will and the blinding pain of your splintered ankle, takes an excruciating step towards the cabin door. The movement is stiff, your body reduced to a marionette, pulled reluctantly along by your strings. It's not that bad. The pain feels good. You Throw your body into the abyss. In a single moment of overwhelming willpower, you tear your body from the wall and hurl it towards the gaping abyss. <laughs> Too late. Capillaries burst and muscle fibers tear as you and the princess struggle over the reins of your body. One foot planted firmly on the edge where the floor ends and the nothing begins. It's unquestionable that her reserves are greater than yours, but fortunately for you, the distance you have to cover is far shorter. Enough is enough. I'm tired of us always losing. It's just a step away. I know. You throw everything you have against her and manage for one brief moment to overpower the princess's hold on your body. But that moment was all you needed. Your foot slips a few inches, and you collapse forward, the darkness swallowing you whole. <laughs> Her thought slips through you, unheeded, as you fall, and fall, and fall. <laughs> <laughs> One end. But at least it's ours. An empire of frigid nothing. Now we fall forever. Saving the world, but at least you didn't ruin it. What happens now? We fall forever. I don't know what he thinks happens now. I'll be sure to find that out. 
Oh. And why is that? <laughs> just you and you and you and you and me. But Uh oh. Turn the last season you feel something a mass, a growth torn out of you. Friends look at each other for a short moment. You don't answer before she's gone and you feel a resistance underneath your feet once more. Memory returns. She's gone. Where does she go? Should we try and find her? And there's that mirror again. Why is it here? Why now? Approach the mirror. Approach the mirror. Silence is reached for there at one they're gone once again the mirror always uh, tip makes them leave but you need to see what's in it you are nothing at all uh oh that isn't right you can you can't be nothing you refocus your gaze and then you see it a figure faint and veiled in shadow just beyond the reflection are you me I think you know what I am what? Crack slides down the center of the mirror, splitting the image of glass in two. And then another crack forms, and another, and another. Turn the mirror to a jagged shard of broken glass. So you're the narrator. I was wondering if I'd ever get to see you. The narrator, yes. I suppose that's my job, isn't it? You needed help, after all. An objective voice to guide your blade. You were never supposed to see me. I wonder how many worlds you've damned to extinction to fall this far. What are you? Are you something like me? Oh, I'm nothing like you. I am an echo. Likely one of many. Somebody made you, after all, and I'm what's left of him. Not... So many questions. Uh, every time I see them, it's like a piece of you breaks. I'm aware. And if I were you, I'd be more precious about your time. If you made me, then what am I? You're the long quiet. The god I made to rid the world of death. What? A god? I always... I don't want to be a... I don't... God, I want to be me. You are you. And if you would let everything work the way it was supposed to, you never would have woken up to the reality of your true nature. There's no accounting for free will. Others like you. You've said something like that before. Has every narrator really been different? Of course. That is by both necessity and design. This construct you're in exists in many places at once. Any time you failed, any time you thought yourself dead, it would restart and shunt both your consciousness and hers into another world. But you'll be awake soon. And then it won't be able to work like that anymore. Do you have anything to say for yourself for all of this hubris? I do. The people out there are real. No matter what you do to them, no matter what you enable, I want you to remember that. Are 
Are you part of me or are you something else? No, I am not a part of you. But that's all a matter of perspective, isn't it? From one vantage point, I must seem wholly foreign, but from another, well, all the versions of me that have existed have collectively heard your every thought and driven your every action. If that isn't being part of you, then what is? Soon I'll be gone entirely, and you'll be left alone with your final choice. So allow me to make my final request. The princess contains death itself within her but I wove you into being with all the power you need to destroy her forever. Do it. Slay her, and rid the world of death and suffering. Are you a god or were you a god? No. In life, I was painfully mortal. A witness to the end of days. I held the fear of death in my heart and saw oblivion threaten the very memory of everything I knew and everyone I loved. I needed to do something. So I made you. And I made her. And I made this place to hold you both. <laughs> Rest easy, I'm going to destroy her. Are you lying? I can't tell. But I've said my piece, and my time's up. It's like I said, I'm just an echo. And echoes always fade away. You know what you have to do. As the final fragment of glass shatters, you see yourself with newfound clarity. Ed was right, you are the long quiet, a vast and nascent god. And it's finally time for you to wake up. All this is for you. When you arrive at the heart of things, there's no final vessel for you to bear witness to. Nothing for you to find. the hell? I can finally see you. And you can finally see me. Hello. I can fix her. I can fix her. I can fix her. It's been so long. And my heart has ached for this moment. I've missed you dearly. Do you know about the echo? Did you hear our conversation? Every word you spoke found its way to me. I know him, and I know his construct. He was deluded by his fear of death. Pay him no mind. I'm the long quiet, but I don't really know what that means. Names are their attempts to capture that which cannot be captured. They call me the Shifting Mound. A pale imitation of what I actually am. What happens now? Ever the passive player. Always reacting and never acting. But it's woven into your nature, isn't it? When the Echo spun us from one into two, he gave you a choice and me a role to play. I am not death, but I contain it in my multitudes. So, will you attempt to destroy me and bring about a world devoid of death and the possibility of meaning? Or, will you open the final doors to our liberation? There's so many stories we've left unfinished, can we really just leave? Even as your eyes begin to open, you still hold on to the notions of is and is not, of beginning and end. Pitch black islands in the blinding light of the infinite. There is nothing to resolve. Nothing restraining us but us. Don't you have a say in all this? Why is all this all falling on me? Of course I have a say in all of this. 
You and I share reflections of each other's burdens, just as you and I share reflections of each other's gifts. If we didn't, the winding paths that brought us here wouldn't have been full of strife and conflict. If I let you out, an entire world ends for good. I can't do that. If you're saying that, it's because you don't yet understand. But we cannot use words alone to grasp at things that words cannot express. And you cannot rationalize with logic that which defies it. Violence and passion are dances that both of us know well. If this is what it takes to enlighten you, then so be it. certainly was shape a world without you will take I know what I am but I do not know what I am not if a world without me is so unknown then how can you be so sure you want to create it there are a few things more terrifying than one's own heart and there is almost nothing more terrifying than sharing it with another but the most terrifying thing of all is to leave one's heart unshared. You are the only thing like me, and I am the only thing like you. Could you bear the weight of an eternity alone? Do you dare to shape a reality of solitude and thrust it on creation? Thank you for sharing yourself with me. I'm aware of what it did to you. The understanding you've returned to me is a gift. Your lover tried to stake into your body, and another, and another, and another. Do I miss your heart because I can't stand to see it go? Love melted into skepticism, and you pulled back layer after layer after layer, until all you were left with was the knowledge that you did not know me. You sought the truth, then. Will you hide from it, now that it is within your grasp? I don't want to hide from the truth. Then don't. Leave with me. There's no need for you to fight what we are. I won't leave with you, not until I see things from my perspective. If you need more time to open your eyes, then I will give you all the time in the world. To question everything is to deny the proof of reality that lies in front of you. By believing in your suffering, you make your suffering real. In believing in your limitations, you placed a shackle on your neck. But even then, you remembered the impermanence of the material and watched as the walls of your prison decayed into nothing. To be impermanent is not to end, but to change. And for the world to be impermanent is to make finite the suffering of all things. Would you strip that gift away and leave them all to suffer in their permanence? They'll get over it. They'll see permanence as a gift in time. Or, in time, would they see it as a curse? A web of nerves, Lena. Where did you end and I began? When you felt what it was to be me, 
We held on to each other and pierced the veil of truth. Will you abandon that curiosity now that we are no longer joined in physicality? Curiosity comes back to doing the right thing. All things are connected through me and through you. To harm me is to harm yourself, is to harm everything. The truth of that moment remains our truth. Clasp between you abates, the princess relaxes, smiling from distance. The respite is welcome. Are you starting to see? Nothing is immutable. Everything that is exists only in relation to everything it isn't. There is no constant. There is no center. Open your eyes and accept what we are. We can leave this prison together. It's easy for, uh, to believe in things uh, you believe in when you get to sit above it all. It is from my vantage point that I can see the totality of truth. What do you think happens if, you le if we leave here? This universe dies, and a new one is born. And that one dies, and a new one is born. And you and I get to witness it all, weaving a tapestry of life wherever we go. You are cruelty itself, and I cannot let you exist. I will smite you. Well, then try to destroy me if you can, but I will not yield easily to your delusion. You don't have to face her alone. Which hero are you? I'm all of them. I assume in the same way that you're all of you. Yep, uh, you have no idea how good it is to hear you. It's good to be here. You'll never be able to strike a decisive blow from out here. There's still a piece of me nestled close to where it all began. I can take you there. I can take you to her heart. It's time to resume our dance. She's relentless, isn't she? Let's make this quick. Are you ready? I'm ready. Then let's go. <laughs> what is this? A sketch? And here we are. I'd say we were back where it all started, but I guess it's a little after that, isn't it? Yeah, I see her bodies outside Do the you windows. you need me to describe things? No. I will take the blade. That's probably for the best. It's always seemed to give us more options than not. I will go into the basement. The stairs. Do you remember the first time we were here? The first time we heard her voice? It's almost over, isn't it? That's okay. Let's just talk. The two of us. One more time, before you kill me. She sounded just like that. Timid and gentle. Only, she didn't know us. And down we go. We shouldn't keep her waiting. You're really going to do it then, aren't you? You're really going to kill me. You don't have to. You know that, right? But if that's what you want... We might as well talk a bit first. I wouldn't mind a few extra minutes. Yeah, we can talk for a couple of- STAB HER! So this is really it then. <laughs> Let's see this through. <laughs> so this is what it feels like to actually die. 
I think this is for the best. I don't know what the world will be like without me. But it can't be that bad if it still has you in it. Aww. I've always loved you. Don't forget me. You blink and the princess is gone. All you have left of her is a small, melancholic weight that sits at the borders of your heart. Whatever action brought you and the princess into being was rough and jagged, left each of you with a piece of each other. By destroying once her once and all, and for all, you also destroyed a part of yourself. But the world hasn't ended. Things continue on. She's gone. And I don't think she's coming back. No, she's not. Then we did what we set out to do. Come on, let's get going. We don't need to linger down here anymore. You leave the basement behind. Then the stairs. And then you leave the cabin itself. It's quiet here. The path in the woods outside are an empty canvas, but... There's even more to see beyond this place. The fruits of your labor are a world free from death. The body of an ancient creature stirs from hibernation. You feel sensation limbs once couldn't fathom. Everything here is you. You feel your wings spanning a cosmic scale, but twisted and crumpled, and bound and agonized attention to a finite plane. You feel the glass of the construct breaking in on you, finding you across the infinite sides and infinite angles. Push back and strain against it. it. Does not yield. He's gone. She's gone. No one is left to trap us here but us. Open your heart and bear witness to your new kingdom. All at once, the unyielding tension gives way. And then the shattering. You are free, and before you lies the endless expanse of absolute reality. A new, arduous, re absolute reality, one forged by your will and by a long, arduous cycle of bloodshed that has stained your hands countless times over. But there will be no more bloodshed in the new world. It's finally over, isn't it? But all of us are still here. I knew we'd finally see it through. All it takes to be a winner is grit and determination. We really did win, didn't we? We're the house now. We get to make the rules. This is nice. No more hunting. No more running. Just us. And whatever's out there. Absolute reality. Who would have thought there was really a world outside of us? And who would have thought we'd actually wind up siding with him? The whispering, and the coercion, and the bickering. Everything horrible about being alive has stopped. I could get used to this. That wasn't very hard at all. Speak for yourself. Well, boys, how does it feel? We're not just on top of the pecking order. We are the pecking order now. I hope this was all worth it. Because I'm personally inconsolable. Lucky for us, you have forever to get over it. Time mends a lot of things. You'll get better. Here, here. To our vanquished foe. It's good to be back. Now we just have to figure out what to do with ourselves. Forever. No problem. We can do that, yeah? Yeah. We can do that. Slay the Princess, created by Tony Howard and Amber. That was one hell of a game. That was like That was one mind-blowing just crazy game. There's so much to it. 
And by the way, we did about four hours. Now, apparently, if you do every possible variation of, you know, killing her every time, it's about 10 hours long. So we only saw about 40% of the game. So there's another six hours worth of variations if you want to go back and do it yourself and see all the different variations and different outcomes and stuff. It's, it's crazy. It's like this game's huge. Absolutely incredible. That was such a fun experience. I like that game. Yeah, it's no Gollum, but it was pretty good. That was... That was one of the most creative original games I've played in a long time. That was... That was fun. I enjoyed that one.